Good afternoon, folks. Hope everybody's doing well. Good Friday. <laughs> so we are looking at a market that has been all over the place this week. And I kind of like want to talk a little bit about something I did today that has obviously brought a lot of questions up. Folks sending me emails and such about why I was taking off the singles in the last portion of the trade I had this morning. And I want to make sure that you understand why I don't move my stop loss back. Once I, once I trim the risk, this is one of the rules that you want to have going forward in your trading as well. You don't want to be doing a lack of a stop loss. You see a lot of folks out there that this is the number one reason why most people won't show you their live executions, the trade management, because they're either not using a stop loss or they're doing it poorly. Most of the time, they're not using a stop loss. And that to me communicates a lack of understanding what they're doing. Chances are they're probably risking too much. And the bottom line is they don't know where to place a stop loss. I have no problem being stopped out. I have no problem getting the trade wrong. But I do have a problem with opening up my stop once I trim it. So if the stop has been reduced as the trade moves in my direction, I may be trailing that stop loss up closer to pair the total risk that would be open at the time of the entry before making the stop loss become either break even or locking in something for profit. Either or, once I move it, it never gets taken the other direction. Like I don't take it, move it up five handles and say, oh, well, you know, it might get my stop. Let me, let me drop it down three from the five I just moved it or whatever. I commit myself to that. And that has helped me over the years frame a better understanding about where I want to move my stop. And it makes it more disciplined for me to adhere to a rule-based idea about not opening up risk once I trimmed it down. And today, you watched it in an example from this morning, I moved my stop loss up. I have no regrets about it, even though the market did move up higher. I was unable to do anything in the afternoon. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, oh, he hit the reset button. <laughs> uh, what I'm showing, okay, because there's a lot of talkers out there that can't find profitability in their live streams. So, Instead of doing the Robbins Cup, how about finding profitability first, Vincent? And then we'll talk about Robbins. Second, Sam, join the Robbins Cup for real. I promise you, I'll do 25 times whatever you do. If I don't, I'll delete my YouTube channel. How's that? Is that, is that straight enough forward for you? Now, with that out of the way, I promise you won't hear any more about it on this one, but you'll probably hear more of it later on over the weekend. It's going to be sleepless in Allen, Texas tonight. <laughs> so if we look at moves like today, and you're probably looking at that morning move where the market dropped, the bottom fell out of it real quick. That's a Judas swing. Okay. And you can clearly see in my markup, the execution, I saw it as such. If you're zoomed in, okay, and this is going to go in the same thought process of the management of a stop loss, okay? When you're zooming in on your charts, and this is what I see a lot of the students, I don't know if they're trying to make sure they have a specific candle in the photograph or the, the screenshots, but they're zoomed in so close, you can't really, you can't really measure what's going on. So, when I'm looking at my charts, I have a lot more data showing. And I think that's the number one reason why folks, they get disoriented from what I'm showing. They think that everything that I have in the screen is pertinent to the very setup that I'm trying to engage in. And that's not the case. But I am showing it so that way, at least in the, the presentations, because on Twitter, once I compress it and speed it up, I lose some resolution even though I'm screen capturing it with a lot of resolution, my monitors are kind of big 
So when it goes into compression for Twitter, you lose a little bit of that resolution. Unless I make the chart a little bit closer than normal, you really can't appreciate the clarity of what price is doing at each candle and how it paints. So you want to have at least enough in your charts when you're watching it. And also, you shouldn't be trading on your phones. Okay, I saw a gentleman. I'm assuming it's a gentleman. Forgive me if it's not. Someone t tweeted to me, said, hey, can you, uh, can you gift me a phone so I can trade? First of all, I wouldn't buy you a phone so you can trade. Okay, you should not be trading on your phone. Even though you see me sometimes <laughs> early in the morning before I get out of bed, I might do something and screen capture it. That's just me highlighting something, but you should not be ever making financial decisions in your trading with applications on your phone. Like moving a stop loss, managing a position while you're on the go. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's fine. But doing analysis on your phone and trading from your phone, uh, yeah, that's a recipe for disaster because you're you're looking through such a small lens and not really taking in enough information. So that's the reason why I have as much data on my charts when I'm showing you my examples. I want you to understand where we are in, within the price run, where we are in the previous dealing range. So it helps you understand why I'm not in a rush to raise my stop loss up. I'm more concerned about watching where price is going than that of protecting the fact that I might get stopped out and have a losing trade. Now, that's number one rule always, preservation of capital. But clout and saving face publicly is the number one rule for most people on, on social media today. They don't want to do anything that might be viewing them outwardly from outside perspective, other ones that we may be looking at you or them, could be very judgmental. And that is many more times costly and expensive and painful than that of a losing trade that you would have done in the privacy of your own trading without making your results public. And there are lots of folks right now that are wrestling right now because they want to stand out. They want to shake their sword and stand up and rabble rouse. And they're hanging around in break even and or in drawdown with only one quote unquote profitable day for the entire month so far. And they're the loudest to talk. And they'll tell you that you're not going to hear sound good advice here when I execute on the sound good advice that I teach. So when you watch a video by me, okay, consider how much information I have on the chart because it's pertinent to you getting the higher time frame perspective. Everything that's salient, unless I'm doing like, what do you see? Like I'm zeroed in on a small little segment of, of a price fractal at that time. But when I'm doing a trade and I'm managing the trade, I'm allowing you to see all of the information that I believe that would be useful to you because I teach grading price swings. You want to be able to go back and look at the dealing range that I'm operating in. And if you have a phone or if you have your charts on your laptop or your computers and if you have multiple monitors, if you're so, zo so zoomed in that you can only see a small little segment of price action, how can you? How can you fully trust what you're seeing on the next few candles is going to be something that is limiting your trade or putting a cap on it prematurely because you're so zoomed in. You're losing sight of something that would be a longer term objective. Now, I learned that lesson very painfully and costly. Losing trades that were winners, holding on to really good trades too long because I had my charts zoomed in too tight. And over years and years and years of just saying, I got to take a step back from this and seeing the charts better than I do now. Well, not better than I do now, but better than I did then. I'd see it now better because I allow for more information. And also, and I mentioned this several times in my 
discussions and lectures and even on Twitter spaces. Periodically, when you're in a trade, especially if you feel like you're second guessing it, like if you're in a trade, it's moved and you just don't know for sure it's going to keep running. Step away from your chart. Put your laptop maybe on a coffee table or dining room table. Take a, take a little bit of a distance between you and it and look at it further away. Put more data on the chart and then kind of get a feel for where you are at that moment. Many times it'll give you a different perspective and you'll see, if you understand how to read price action, you'll see that what you're fearful of because you're so zoomed in and you're watching that one or five minute chart and it's fluctuating around a lot because you you're it's zoomed in and it's causing your brain to pump out this adrenaline and or up to the point of releasing cortisol, which is a stressful hormone. In the last Twitter space, I talked about managing anxiety attacks and panic attacks. And when you're in trades, whether they're profitable or losing, you're pumping chemicals constantly in, into your bloodstream. And if you are not used to that incurred risk while trading, it can cause you to be, what, number one, emotional, psychologically you know, amped up, and you're going to make something that is very insignificant paramount. It's going to be a, a huge thing when it isn't. And typically, for those that want to use a stop loss, correctly uh, we're not concerned about you know ramming up the stop real quick to lock in anything because we're allowing the market to move around and gyrate and you watched the trade this morning that i've had i had a very specific fair value gap that i did not want to see come back into and i certainly didn't want to see it close that that fair value gap so when my stop was trailed up it was trailed up to the bottom of the fair value gap that I did not want to see fill in. My annotation in the fair value gap was it must remain un, you know, unfilled. For me to trust it, because it's a Friday. Everybody else wanted to go short. They gave you the carrot this morning, right at 9.30. They dropped it real quick. Took it below the 9 o'clock low. Sell side was purged. The 6.30 low. Purged. Everything, everything looked like it was a sell to anybody looking at that chart. Typically, on Fridays, there will be a resume, not resume, <laughs> it'll be a return back into the weekly range. So what's the weekly range been this week? Down. So it's going to do what? Likely retrace up into that weekly range. 20 to 30, maybe 40% of the range. So whenever I see a Friday slam down after a bearish week, my mind immediately jumps to, okay, we've already hit so many discount arrays, in other words, targets on the low end. It's reasonable to expect this as manipulation. So that drop down at 930 on E-mini S&P, that to me, Signaled, okay, this is, we're done. But I didn't want to go in there and try to catch a falling knife. And you watched me do that the other day, yesterday. That wasn't altogether something different. This, this could be me reading it as it's a Judas swing. It's Friday. It might retrace back into the weekly range. And if I try to go in there and try to buy the low, and it could just keep dropping. So I required a little bit more. I need to see it get back above the nine o'clock low. And I need to see it create a fair value gap. And you watched that form. I drew it out. It was retracing back down into that before the 10 o'clock hour. So I accumulated multiple positions using the fair value gap. Stop loss was not rushed up. But once it starts approaching a second target, my second target for the day was 39.40 and three quarters. That level is an old high. We were looking for, obviously, the public to be arm wrestling smart money. Smart money is going to pressure on Friday the street money. 
Now, street money sees what all week long. The market's been going down. It's going down. It's going down. In their mindset, they're thinking, okay, it's been going down. Nobody wants to miss out on the move going over the weekend because it's probably going to be lower on Monday. So let's get short. So there's a there's an arm wrestling match from a sentiment perspective. Uh, perspective. You have the informed money, street money, against those individuals that are just trying to catch up. They missed the move, so therefore they must do what? Do what everything and everyone has done to be profitable for the week, which was be net short. And when everybody dropped the market real quick and sudden, just like that, going into the open, CNBC, Bloomberg, everybody's going to be chattering. Oh, futures are down. Looks like it's going to be a, a ugly morning. What does that tell the retail trader? They better get short. The market's going down. Get ready for it. I, on the other hand, am expecting TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, okay? What that means is, is it's a little quirky expression for the likely of the likelihood of a retracement back into the weekly range. So the weekly range is being majority lower. So it's going to do what? Retrace back up into that range a little bit. 20 to 30% as much as 40% of the weekly range. Now, once I see the move start panning out, if you haven't watched the video I've uploaded on Twitter, you know, I've already shared it. It's been recorded. You can watch me manage it. I give you my views about it. And it's actually trading in a high resistance liquidity run. Now, you probably heard this term, low resistance liquidity run. That's what I teach my students. That's what I like to trade in those environments where it's just really, really easy to get in, get the, the stop placed. It quickly runs to your profit uh, objectives and partials. And usually the trades over like pretty quick. High resistance liquidity runs have much more deeper retracements. They tend to consolidate a lot. They chop around, then move a little bit, go to a new level, then consolidate and chop and then move again. That is a high resistance liquidity. It doesn't mean, obviously, you can see I can find profitability in that. But I try to steer my students when they're first learning away from these market conditions. Now, you might think, and I've read several people over the last two days, they're chit-chatting in, in tweets. They'll say, I can't really learn from these videos when Michael puts them up over the music. It doesn't serve any purpose. Well, you're wasting your time then because you need to go into the examples I'm showing and study why those areas are being used for me when I'm taking a pyramid entry, when I'm building my position larger. Why was I buying or selling where I was selling? Why was I taking my partials where I was taking them? Look at the daily chart, the weekly chart, the four hour, the one hour, the 15 minute time frame. Don't just look at the example I'm showing with that one minute chart and think, well, that's all there is to it. You're, you're ignoring the opportunity for you to discover much more about why I was doing it. Because it's not, it's not only on a one minute chart. The one minute chart is allowing me the medium or time frame to engage in. It's not just the one minute chart. Okay. There's other things that are there that you need to understand that's been taught on this YouTube channel. And by doing that, that, that work of going in and saying, okay, he showed this. So he took the initiative to do this because it's not showing off. I, I can do a better job of showing off. This is me teaching you by example, showing you executions, trade management, and also Showing you, like today, when we were in the 10.30 time window going into 11 o'clock, it was stalling just below the 39.40 level after it had already swept it. I took my partial five contracts above that, took four contracts off at 39.33 and three quarters. So I had the majority of the trade already booked. Stops were rolled. But because once I roll my stop up and I'm long, I've taken two partials. I'm, I'm already, in my opinion, in a position of, I don't care. I have a free look now. I have a free look to see if it can go to my terminus, my, my best case exit strategy, which would have been 39.45 and a quarter. So if it could get to that level, that would be my morning session. I'd be done. 
as the market consolidated between 10 30 and 11 o'clock i was annotating saying okay it needs to move now you can see it in my annotation so okay it needs to do this right now it needs to do this i need to see speed it needs to be sharp it needs to run higher and there were several times that i wanted to see that happen in price and it didn't do it so i had five contracts remaining on the position so what do i do start scaling off one so what am i doing i'm managing number one trade expectations i was watching the the guy i've turned a lot of you guys on to uh patrick uh wyland he's live streaming over there on youtube and i was watching him and then uh, i had to leave but i was listening to him as i was driving and he was squirming <laughs> and i'm not making fun of you pat i'm just saying this is typical when you want the market to run in your favor, you want you can't stand it. Like it's like, come on, please, 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 go for me, go for me, go for me. The best thing you can do if you feel that, and it's not going to feel like this is the best thing. It's not going to feel like it's the thing you should be doing. But if you have enough of a position to take something off, that's what you do. And I know he doesn't like partials because he thinks it's not worth you know, having the initial risk. And I understand that's the same argument to other people on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook, they have the same opinion. But partials profit. Okay, I don't understand the argument. If you get stopped out, that's a partial of your equity that you just lost. I mean, think, folks. Think. No, I don't want to take any profits. That doesn't make any sense to me to take something out and pay myself for all the time and effort and energy and attention I've placed on this engagement here. No, I don't want to do that. It's all or nothing. To me, that doesn't make any sense. That makes absolute zero sense to me. Are you going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then say, uh, okay, I got a flat tire. I can't make it to work on time. Um, I'm tied up. Can't get to work. Um, you know, I, I, I got a call out on Friday. And then, hey, hey, boss, listen. I couldn't do Friday. Just keep keep everything I put in. Just you know, let me go home with nothing. That's what that's what trading. That's exactly what trading is without taking partials when you're given the opportunity to be paid. That's the equivalent of that. Does that make any sense? That's asinine. You are going to struggle when you first start learning how to do this. So it is advantageous for you to know where you're trying to take profits. So that way you know what it feels like. You get accustomed to doing it over and over again. And that's why I teach and I preach that when you're new, you should strive to get five handles. Not that that's your entire career. That's not what I ever, I've never said that, but you can make a career on that. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't make a career on five handles. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. I could do that every single day and show you that account, a live account, a funded account, Robin's Cup, whatever the fuck you want to do, I can beat Robin's Cup with five handles. All you got to do is find your ass in that leaderboard, okay? That's all I'm asking you to do. Don't waste my fucking time talking. Don't talk. Get up there and then talk. Because once you call me out and you tweet to me, everybody's going to fucking see it, clowns, and I will rip your shit apart. Sorry, I had to look that out. But you have to have a you have to have a target, a goal, something, because here's what you don't realize. You might have a good edge. You might have a good role. You might be dialed in and your attention to detail is keyed up. You know exactly what you're doing. And you've been consistent for a day, a week, a month, a couple months. And you get this feeling like you're King Kong and you can't do anything wrong. Then you get into that trade that's going to come and you're going to hold on to it and it's going to build up a lot of unrealized equity. That means on paper, unrealized potential. If you close a trade, you would get that, but you're not going to because partials are stupid. That's what you've been telling yourself and you don't want to subscribe to that. And I have watched my own trades. I've watched my students' trades, and I've watched people that don't trade anything like me get real close to their objectives. And I listened, and I observed, and I watched them arm wrestle the public because people 
with more insight than them, more experience than them, simply said, why don't you just take something off here? It's struggling and you're flipping out and you're losing your mind and you're stressing out and you're, you're all over the place. You're animated. Can't sit still and you're live streaming. That made me anxious and I don't get anxious in the marketplace, but that made me anxious watching this person squirm over something that is such an easy remedy. You just take something off. That's trade management. That's risk management. And it's also emotional management. You have to manage the person that's pushing the buttons. And money, fear of losing, fear of judgment pub publicly. Listen, I'm going to call a move, probably a couple of them this year, and it's not going to work. You think I give a shit what you think if I do it wrong? I don't care. I'm going to do it more times right than I'll do it wrong, and it's okay. And I want you to understand that you're going to do it wrong and because you don't know for certain. You don't know for certain it's going to move where you want it to. I'm proving with my annotations that most of the time I'm right. But today, I wasn't. I wasn't. Even though I was wrong, it didn't go to my 3945 objective. Even though I was wrong and I saw a fair value gap that I wanted to see you know, remain unfilled, it filled in, and that was a warning sign to me. I was like, okay, it needs to rip up to that 39.45. If it came all the way back down there, it needs to vault, go right up there, have no difficulty whatsoever. And I've mapped out two times where everybody that would just simply watch the first couple of videos of my 2022 mentorship and think they got it all figured out and they don't have to watch anything else. I'm going to tell you the folks that took shortcuts, where they're going to see the fair value gap, the shift in market structure, and they're going to try to go short. And I'm telling you in the chart, that's not it. Because you didn't watch the entire thing. You didn't back test. You didn't read price. You didn't study. You didn't do any of those things. And you're trying to sell short today over and over and over again, wrestling, arm wrestling, because you have something to prove. Well, you're proving that you're not as disciplined as you claim to be. You're not profitable. You're not consistent. You're not precise, and your method's shit. Yin and yang ain't doing shit for you. So if you're going to wrestle with these markets, you don't invite yourself to be wrestling emotionally and psychologically while you're in the trades. So if you feel that tug of war that's affecting your focus, if you're physically talking about it, if you, if you do those types of things, if you make any kind of physical, audible response to whatever the market's doing, that's the surest sign that you need to take something off. You have to do that. If you don't do that, you're, you're literally putting yourself through the ringer for no reason. Because you don't know if your target's going to get hit, just like mine wasn't hit today. I had two parcels that came off, and I had the largest portion of the trade in the book. My stops were rolled. If it came back, I told you I, I didn't care. $9,100, but wrong. Say that again. $9,100, and I was wrong. How many times can you afford to be wrong if you don't pay yourself? You're, you're literally in the statistics that this industry talks about, shitting yourself in the first 90 days, which is why I did today, day one, 90 days. You'll see every fucking trade, everything, full history, everything, but you will not see that from the people crying about it. They want me to do it. I have no problem doing this, folks. If that's what you need to feel good about this, Sure, it's no problem. I do it every day anyway. Like, I'm going to fucking forget how to trade because <laughs> I got to show you the history. I, I, listen, listen, uh, we're dumb. We're done with all this dumb shit, okay? I'm killing everything this year. I'm removing any doubts. All you have to do is keep showing up. I'm bringing everything, everything. You can't be profitable. You can't make a lot of money with five handles. Watch me. 
Watch my students. You don't need to know where the high is going to go. You don't need to know where it's going to close. You don't need to capture the full AM session move. You don't need to capture the full PM session move. You don't have to be right on your direction. You can be wrong. Get in alignment and say, okay, I was wrong there. And you reverse it and do half the position size that I just took a loss on. And end up making more money than you probably would have done if it would have moved in your favor. This is what I'm talking about when many of you are getting into this industry and you don't really know what you're doing and you don't know what to expect and you listen to these yahoos on the internet. They have no idea what they're doing. These people that can't prove that they can trade profitably, they're the one giving you advice. They're the ones telling you what you're seeing didn't happen. <laughs> That's lunacy. Like, that is lunacy. Like, that is some Tom Cruise jumping on the couch shit right there, okay? Like, these are the people you're going to listen to? Just look at this week, folks. I didn't get lucky this week. We're going to do a whole year of this. You need to think about who you're giving your time and attention to. You need to guard it. You are going to be met with so many things distracting you this year. Social media, trolls, your personal life. Watch how it happens. It always works like this. It always does. Because there's, it's like this unseen force that doesn't want to see anybody be successful. And all you got to do is keep your nose down in the charts. Keep your ears open and listen to what I'm telling you to do. And don't do the things I tell you not to do. You need to use a stop loss. I could have kept this trade from being seen by any of you today. But if I'm going to teach you, if I'm going to teach you how to do proper trade management, proper risk management, and emotional and psychological management in a trade, this was a perfect hallmark moment for it because I wanted to see it run up there. I literally was telling myself vocally, I said, it needs to go here. And as soon as I did that, that was it. That was my, that was my cue. So I do exactly what I'm telling you to do. If I'm going to make a physical response audibly or with my body, I'm, I'm disturbed. I'm trying to get uh, more comfortable because this is making me uncomfortable. It's not doing what I want it to do. It's not bending to my will. So now I'm becoming what? I'm arm wrestling it. So if I start arm wrestling the market and I have something on the trade where I can peel something off, five contracts, two contracts. What if you only have two contracts? Would you still take one off? Yes. Yes. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Because what you're saying is you fucking know without a doubt that your target's going to get hit. When I'm saying everything in that chart when I was recording it today, once I got my second partial and it pulled off of that 39.40 level, I was like, okay, it needs to stay above that fair value gap that was formed just after 10 o'clock. And I said, I, it must remain open. It traded all the way down into that after running up to uh, 39.33 and uh, three quarters. So that dropped down. I need to see an immediate response to get to 39.40. I got it in the first fair value gap that you'll see in the re recording. It's like a pink color. Then it retraced back down again after running 39.40. But I was already committed to my stop. Now, I could have. I could have opened that stop up. And guess what that does? That makes me a hypocrite. That means I don't practice what I teach. When I practice what I teach. Market went up to 39.80 something, whatever it was today. I don't know exactly. The, um, it had a really nice run. But my focus was only aiming for 39.45. I just want to take a second real quick. Thank you folks that were helping me today on Twitter. Because I did a, a test run on the live sessions. I want to make sure that my layout that I created this morning was okay looking. It's not bling bling, right? That's it's never been me. But uh, it it's 
functioning. It's fine. I got a disclaimer. I got the welcome page and then I had all my charts set up. So the audio, I have a microphone that wasn't connected, but I was just using the laptop microphone. So uh, thank you for helping me, you know, work that out on Twitter and confirming some things. But if you go to look at that recording, you'll see only one liquidity pool highlighted. It says buy side liquidity, 39.45. Oh, you cherry picked it again. Yes. <laughs> I'm good at uh, picking cherries, ain't I? So while that was my only objective for today, because we had to do our grocery shopping in the afternoon, and that's where I spent most of this afternoon. And yes, I was looking at my phone, and yes, I was thinking I could do this, I could do this, but I can't do it because I can't manage it appropriately. So I had to stay out, and here's where I'm at. So the question is, do you have it in you to admit when you're wrong? Can you admit when you're wrong? Because you need that skill set in this industry. A lot of the hotheads, and I might sound like a hothead. I'm, I'm just passionate. But the hotheads that will tell you, don't do this, don't listen to me, don't listen to anybody but them because they're selling bullshit. They have a service. They have something to sell you. I don't, I'm not doing any of that. I'm, I'm over here outperforming them, over-delivering. I'm busier than them, proving it, showing you. Got profitable students coming out of my ass, and they got something to say about why you shouldn't be here. And the response would be, buy their stuff as an alternative. I'm just reminding you, I'm doing this because I want to do this. It's free. It works. People are making money. You can find consistency in it. You will lose money like anything else, but you need to understand how to manage even winning positions. Winning trades, they have to be managed just as much as a trade that might be a losing trade, but you hold on to them too long. Now, think about this for a moment. If you've traded with live money, this is not the same as when you're trading with a demo or paper trading, you're trying to learn how to do it. If you ever traded with live funds, you're going to have this experience once you do it. At least a few times you'll have this happen to you. You'll put a trade on. You'll feel good about it. Or maybe you won't feel good about it. You'll just be impulsive and put the trade on because you have time and you just want to see something happen and feel like the lottery wins. But you'll put the trade on and it won't move in your favor right away. And it starts drifting down. And you know in your mind's eye that if it goes to this level, you don't want to be in that trade. But your stop loss, if you've adopted one, is maybe uh, very close to that level that's really uncomfortable for you if you get to that point. So in reality, that should have been your stop loss where you're uncomfortable because you don't know if the market's going to drop down there and snap into that level and go through it. So wherever that pain threshold is for you in the trade, that's where your stop loss is. But you know, how do you manage that? Fear. Don't over leverage, but use that same stop. Because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm fundamentally wrong as a human being, because if it goes here, it's probably going to keep going. And my idea about it going higher is incorrect. And that's uncomfortable. That's worse than a stop out because it's pride. Pride takes more than a losing trade takes in funds. It lasts longer, the pain's worse. The drawdown doesn't come back that fast from a losing series of trades because of the ego, the pride is the issue of being right, to be perceived by your peers or onlookers, detractors, supporters, whatever you wanna call it, an audience, whoever you invite to watch your trade to make it harder than it fucking has to be, it's stupid, <laughs> uh, it's it's madness to see what you guys want to do with yourselves and then when you are struggling trying to find profitability you're coming at me to vent when you're doing it all wrong you're out there trying to arm wrestle yourself in front of the public and you're floundering I don't need to do anything you're doing it to yourselves but if you're here to be a student and you want to learn how to do it correctly you have to identify where you're wrong 
and admit that, okay, I'm wrong here. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. But you look at it as, that's a weakness. I should have known better. Who says? Who says that you should have known better? You don't know what that market's going to do. You don't know if it's going to run to your target. I don't know. That's why I have to use a stop loss. If I knew for a certain, I wouldn't even bother moving my stop loss. I wouldn't use a stop loss and I wouldn't take my partials, would I? Oh, shit. I never really thought about that. Hello. In high resistance liquidity run signatures, I am very, very disciplined about taking partials. If I'm in a low resistance liquidity run signature, I can run them for a full pool. I have a lot of things that I feel confident and I'll let the full stop out happen in that case and not have to worry about getting any partial. I know I'm on side. That, that doesn't mean I know with 100% of surety that I'm correct. It just means that I, as the trade manager, managing the person, the risk, the emotions, the money, all those factors being equal, I'm comfortable with not taking partials in a move that's low resistance liquidity. That means it's going to move like a hot knife through butter. Nothing's going to really slow it down. Look at the annotations today. In today's video, I'm annotating saying, okay, you think you see the 2022 model and it's a sell here. It's not. Retail sees resistance here. It's not, but it's slowing price down. And I said, it's a speed bump here on that first fair value gap. What are those adjectives communicating? Resistance. High resistance, but not formidable enough to stop the price from going where? 39.45 and 39.85 or wherever the high was. But it's a lot more aggravating when you're used to seeing moves just run right away for you. See, I'm used to trading in market environments that, like when I dog whistle for my boxers and I call them, they immediately come to my side. When I dog whistle a trade that's a low resistance liquidity run signature, I'm comfortable knowing that the market's going to go where I want it to go. I still have, have a stop loss. I'm not all that pressed to take partials or that much of them off because I'm generally on the right side. But high resistance liquidity run signatures, you have to be mindful that they can many times come back and swipe stop losses much more frequently than a low resistance liquidity run signature. Those price runs, they don't have a whole lot of returns back for stops. They just, they're quickly trying to run to an objective above or below the marketplace, which is the reason why I teach my students to look for those. They're very rewarding. They are quick to give you that instant gratification and it's exhilarating. You feel like, wow, man, that thing delivered like nobody's business. Man, how fast that thing happened. That felt awesome. And you want to go right back in and, and do it again when you're new. You think it's going to be something just like that next. And it's not like that. There's small little surgical precision elements that leads to that. But high resistance liquidity runs, they will still go, but they go in these stair-stepping type thing. It'll go up a little bit, consolidate, drop down, reaccumulate, go up a little bit slowly, go to a new high, consolidate, drop down, run stops. Consolidate, rally up again, consolidate, drop down to an inefficiency, rally again a little bit, and then go down once more to take out stops after the inefficiency formed. That's what makes a high resistance liquidity run very frustrating. And many of you that are trying to learn my content, you're going to think that you're trading like I am. And you might think that you're in one of those trades that move real quick and it's like hot knife through butter. But in reality, you're trading a high resistance liquidity run, expecting low resistance in that move. And you're getting frustrated. Why? Because you don't know what you're doing. Two, you're over leveraged. Three, you don't have experience sitting in a trade. And you're not going to take anything off because you listen to people on social media say, don't take partials. They're stupid. When I'm showing you every day, every week, months and years, over and over and over again, me executing with the very things that I teach. Come on now. Come on, what matters more? If you're in a court, okay? Who, if you're sitting in front of a judge and a jury, who's gonna have the more damning evidence? 
somebody that's bringing the receipts, showing that this is what it works like. This is execution. This is the person driving, and I'm doing it. I'm doing it every fucking day, every week. I'm showing you exactly what I taught in those videos, and it's happening like precision. But it's also delivering the same way when I say it's a high resistance liquidity run. It's performing exactly how I said this is what you don't want to be pushing hard in these types of moves. Can you make money? Yes. Can you find five handles in those types of moves? Yes. But you have to relax. You have to relax. And you can't push, 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 push. And you sure as hell need to know the bias. You can't be selling short on a day like this over and over and over again, and adding more and trying to do a bigger position because you're arm wrestling for clout and failing. Failing, Allen, Texas, like I said you would. Why don't you just listen to me? I'm giving you the very things to help you and you are fighting me. You're fighting me. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. When you are in a trade and you feel high strung, when you feel like you want to turn your live stream off because you know your trade's about to shit the bed and you're going to lose more, number one, you need to stop. Take some time off. Two, you're over leveraging. And three, you need to reassess what you're doing because you are fighting real institutional order flow and you don't know it. Market profile is not going to teach you that. Point of control is fucking useless. Depth of market, all that bullshit. Heat maps, dumb bullshit. It's, it's useless. It's all a gimmick. You don't need any of that stuff. You don't need any of it. I've been trading this entire year. Just doing discretionary trades with just the basic of the things that I teach on my YouTube channel. None of that. None of that was enigma. You don't need that. And I think that what I'm showing, they're worthwhile results. And it's not even perfect. Now, you might argue, wait a minute, like you just said on Tuesday it was going to go, uh, barring that. But apart from that, it's just discretionary trading, sticking to just general basic rules, liquidity, inefficiencies, time of day, market structure, simple stuff that may not seem simple to you right now. But if you're in trades and you feel that tendency to want to wig out, and you're uncomfortable, you're squirming, you got to get up, you're walking away from the charts, you're pacing around. Let me tell you what I used to do. When I'd be in trades, usually it was the bond market because when it would move, it, it would move nice and quick. And every tick was over $30, $31.25. So just a tick is almost what a full mini and e mini S&P is today with one contract. And this bond market would move around a lot. And if you got 16 ticks, you know, you're making what 10 contracts on a mini move of one contract would deliver or lose that per contract. So I'd be in the trade. I put the trade on. It's not moving for me. You know, I got 11 ticks. I could, I could bank something here, but I'm like, no, I need it to go 16 ticks. That's what I wanted my trade to be. I took this trade and I am not going to be able to move the stop loss because I was too new. I didn't know what I was doing. So I kept the stop loss exactly where it was because I was thinking, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to get stopped out and not get my $500. What's wrong there? Number one, I'm assuming I'm right. And that's always a bad thing. Two, I'm not appreciating the fact that the stop loss is there to protect me, not a institute of pain and suffering. It's to protect you from excessive pain and suffering. That's what it's paid to do. When you put that stop loss in there and you pay the transaction costs and commissions and fees for that executed order, you paid it to do its job, which is to what? Keep the amount of money and suffering 
at a minimum. Whatever that order would execute at, that's what you pay it to do. Once you place the order, you don't worry about that. It's doing its job. If you are going to worry about it, then don't use a stop loss and try to time it if it goes down there. Because that's the equivalent of what you're doing. So why waste any fucking time doing that? To put the trade in there and then focus on what matters most. Is the trade continuously giving you signs and signatures in price action that it's going where you want it to go? It's not giving you the, the broken wing tactic. You know, it's, it's running out of steam. It doesn't have energy anymore. You know you've been in trades where you just know that this damn thing is not going where you want it to go. But what happens? What happens? You don't take anything off. You don't close the trade and say, okay, I'm not going to waste any more emotional and psychological equity on this trade. If you're holding on to something and it's just driving you nuts, your infancy in this or your obsessiveness, which I know a whole lot about, will prevent you from closing the trade and walking away. And knowing, here's, here's the common sense that everybody ignores, the market's going to trade next week. It's going to have a morning session. It's going to have a PM session. It's going to have liquidity runs. It's going to have a run to inefficiencies. It's going to be all kinds of repeating things that you somehow get amnesia about. And you let the trade go into drawdown. You move your stop or take it off. Instead of taking something off when you had profit and easing that pain and growing through that pain like a child in growing pains, when I was a child, I had growing pains with my feet and my ankles and my shins. And I'm, I'm not that tall. I'm only 5'10", but you would have thought with the, the amount of pain I was feeling, I was going to be 6'10". <laughs> I thought I was being stretched out like some medieval device. But that growing pain of going through this, you compensate for that pain by taking some of the trade off and fund yourself. Take it off. Reduce the measure of risk that you're going to hold on to and be diligent about making sure that if you start feeling that, don't let it go to your full stop. Don't let it go to your full stop. It's simple. If you open the trade up and you're going to take a, a mistake of two full percent, as soon as you start squirming, take, take the trade offs that way, whatever you have, it can't take more than one percent away from you. And if you've taken something off in partials, it can't even be a full 1% then. So what happens when you're wrong? Yeah, it, took, it, it was a mosquito bite. It's not pleasant. It's going to itch you over the weekend. You're going to think about, oh, it didn't work out for me. going to keep going back to it, scratching it and scratching it. And keep doing it, it's going to get infected. And it's going to hold you up from doing something new and exciting and more profitable. But you have to let go of these things and identify these times where you're getting uncomfortable. You're vocalizing your frustrations. You're breathing. It shows that you're physically uncomfortable. You're agitated. You're fidgeting. I fidget with a deck of cards every time I'm trading. You can't hear it, but I have a deck of cards. I'm either doing shuffling. I'm doing one-handed cuts. I'm riffling through them. I'm doing that while I'm waiting for the setup to come. Because in my mind, I'm that sports car in neutral, you know, the gas pedal to the floor. I'm ready to go. Just give me, look at me. Look how many times I can get into something. Boom, 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 boom. Shotgun blast. I'm buying everything or selling everything that could have been used for an entry. I could do a whole lot more entries, but I don't want to be too much for all of you. <laughs> I might show something like that later on in September, October. but. You don't, you don't grow if you hold on to the trade and take nothing off and remove the stop or move the stop larger. When you start trading with real money, you're going to discover something about yourself. This is the thing that hurts most people. It's usually the men. You're going to put the trade on. It's going to offer a little bit of profit. And then you're going to feel that struggling. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't moving. It's not moving for you. And you start worrying about what? It's going to go for my stop. You're worrying about it going to your stop instead of saying, is it showing signs that it wants to continuously moving in my favor? But no, you're not doing that. You're focusing on it's moving to my stop. You're telling yourself it's going to your stop. You're thinking it's going to your stop. 
but you're not doing shit about taking any of the risk off. You've abandoned the idea of studying whether or not it's giving you clues that it's going to keep moving in your direction. You totally forgot about that. Now you're arm wrestling the market like you're somehow going to be able to control it with telekinesis. You staring at the chart, you cussing at the chart, you throwing shit at your, you know, you're throwing shit all around the room. You think that that's going to have something to do with how the market, like the market's going to say, oh shit, he just threw his glasses. Oh shit. He just threw his Ray-Ban glasses against the wall. Man, I better not go for this guy. Stop. You think that's what's going on? You think that's what's going on? You think that anything you act out and go crazy, that that's going to have an influence on what the market's going to do. Now, clearly, right now, we're talking outside the marketplace. And you're laughing. You're probably thinking to yourself, it's true. It's true. I've been there. Maybe not throwing your Ray-Bans, but you've done something to that effect. Resisting the obvious. What you should have done is take something off or collapse the trade and just be out of the pain. You don't want to stay in those positions of uncertainty, pain, discomfort, because what you're doing is fortifying the exact reasons why you're going to be scared shitless taking the next trades when they're good. Oh, man, the last time I got a girlfriend, she cheated on me. So I'm not getting girlfriend. What the hell kind of logic is that? That's what you're doing with the market. You had one bad relationship that you held on to a toxic relationship. The trade doesn't love you. It's okay. There's other ones out there that will. So you have to do what? Kill it. Not murder, <laughs> but you have to kill the transaction. Just be done with it. And save your mental equity, your emotional equity, that psychological tug of war. You have to know when that's there. And as soon as you feel, and I felt it today in the market, it was not giving me what I wanted to see. And I was communicating in my text in the annotation. So that it needs to go here. It needs to go right now. And it just started fluttering. So, okay, I got five contracts on. Let me take one of them off. Do I feel any less anxiety about whether or not this is going to pan out? Not that I was freaking out, but I'm communicating the way you're going to feel it. When you have real money, whether it be your funded account, trading a demo account, because that's what they all are, or with your own money, you're going to feel this eventually. And the way you manage it, the way you press through it, is you take something off. You reduce the risk, and if there's profits, you bank some of it. And you do it again if it doesn't feel like you've overcome it. And that's what I did. I did it once, twice, three times. I said, okay, I'm just going to take it down. We'll take one contract and see if it can run to my target. I don't care at this point. And then being stopped out, $9,187. Wrong. I did the right thing. No regrets. That's why I typed it out. I was communicating exactly how I teach you all. I did not get what I wanted in the final piece, but I anchored with a bullet point so my subconscious remembers I did everything right, no regrets. I got stopped out with no regrets. I do this. I live this, and I teach it so that way you do the same things. You can never get to this level of precision in trade management unless you do the thing I'm teaching you to do, and that's just the bottom line. It's just the way it is, and I don't give a shit who sells you otherwise. I want to see somebody else do what I'm doing. Do that consistently. Explain it. And, and the logic behind why you're going to fail, why you're going to struggle, how to beat it, how to go through it. Not, well, yeah, don't use a stop loss because you might get stopped out. No, use a stop loss because you're going to get stopped out. And you want to keep the risk limited. And you're going to find out one of these days when you finally do touch an account that has real risk monetarily, you're going to have all kinds of staying power. You're going to have Viagra effect holding on to a fucking losing trade. You will go all night, all week, all friggin' month holding that losing trade. But your winning trade, you got two and a half handles. You're freaking out. You can't hold it. You got to go. That's it. Party's over. Date's a dud. Think about that. You are willing. You're willing to go to hell and back for that losing trade. 
That son of a bitch ain't paid you one dime. It ain't gave you anything, it ain't not even so much as a reach around. And you're not going to let go of that one. That's the one, baby. You're going to win. This is a fight to the death. It's mortal fucking combat on this one trade. It's a losing trade. You know damn well it's not going to come back. You don't have a stop loss on it. You're going to hold on and hold on and hold on. And here's the worst case scenario. Some of you are adding to it because you think, all I got to do is add more. And in just a little bit of movement in my favor, I don't need to go all the way back to my original entry because I keep buying more. And Martin, get your ass out the door. Sound familiar, Allen, Texas? Because that's what you're doing. There's nothing enigmatic about it. There's nothing mysterious about what you're doing. You don't know how to trade. And that's the bottom line. And I don't want my students that are listening to do those same things because it's human nature to do it. You don't want to admit you're wrong. You don't want to throw in a town. Okay, I was wrong. It's, this transaction's done. I am completely out of my focus today. I can't do this. And just close the charts and walk away. It won't feel like that's the right thing to do. You got to win. You got to win. It's the way it is. The market took first blood. So now you got to get even and take it back with vengeance. It's a B movie now. Okay. And you're trying to place yourself as the leading role. That's make, that's make believe. That's fantasy shit. These markets will open your head and literally lay you out. Broke. Both physically and psychologically and mentally, you, you're completely be warped. And it's completely avoidable. You have to know when that market is signifying that, hey, I should be running for you right now. And you know it should be. But. But. It's not. And you have profit. And what happens if I get out, ICT? You don't understand. I have been taking loss after loss after loss. And then all of a sudden now i got this one trade where I'm in there just marginally profitable. And yeah, it's okay. It's not moving for me right now. It's been three fucking days. It hasn't done anything for me. But i got a small little gain right now. And I know, I know deep down inside that this trade is not going to pan out for me. I know it's not. But what if it does after I get out? <laughs> I have lived that moment so many times as a 20 year old. Listen, these are the things I've mentioned many times in the boring discussions that you need to listen to. You're going to encounter that. It's uncomfortable. It sucks. You have to admit you're wrong. And even if you close a trade and then it runs in your favor, you would have made, you would have. Well, listen. It just cost me $850 at the grocery store this afternoon. All the woulda and the shoulda and the coulda ain't going to pay the $850 grocery bill that I had to pay at the grocery store. It doesn't, you can't do shit with that. Woulda, coulda, shoulda is nothing. That's all, that's worse than paper trading. It's, a, it's, it's something that you didn't even do anything about. You weren't in there. You can't realize anything from that but regret. And you're doing that instead of saying, I was right to manage my emotions, disconnect myself psychologically from the marketplace and the result of one transaction. I removed that emphasis and power over me as the human being, that wrestling match, that gladiator war. You're in the, you're, you're in the Coliseum. You're doing battle. You think you're doing it with the market. You're doing it with yourself. You're flogging yourself. You're literally beating yourself needlessly. Professionals, consistently profitable students, traders, money managers, they know pain thresholds. They know themselves. That's how they get there. They don't try to hide it. They don't wear blinders. They don't blame somebody else or something else. They own it. And when they feel these triggers, these uncomfortable things that trading will bring and present to you and how you react, how you justify your actions or the lack thereof is going to be an uncomfortable well, endeavor for all of you.
You don't know who you are yet. You think you do. All you young guys, you're all cowboys. And ladies, you, know, you think you're going to be able to manage it well. You're not going to take a high-risk approach. You're going to be very frugal. And that what you think is going to be the thing that gets you through it. And then all of a sudden, you discover, wow, there's a whole lot more to it than that. Yeah. This is hard because you are a formidable person. All of you are. And you're going to hold yourself up doing the wrong things, which is why I talk about it in those boring parts of the videos. Those barriers, which you haven't even encountered it yet. You don't even know what that is yet. You don't even know what I'm talking about. That's why when it goes in one ear out the other, I understand. It's like my kids. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. I told my son when I gave him the car, I said, listen, don't cross the yellow line. If you cross that yellow line, 90% of the accidents that you would ever have won't happen. And the accident he had, he crossed the yellow line. I told him. I specifically told him. I said, if you crash this car, I will not buy you a replacement. You will earn it and work for it. And guess what? That makes me a piece of shit dad in most people's eyes. Well, oh, you have all this money. Yep. But I'm a dad. And he didn't listen. He disregarded it. He could have hurt a family. He could have hurt himself. But guess what? He's at fault. And he has to own that. I'm a piece of shit father if, well, here, here's a replacement car. He learned nothing from that. So when I talk to you in these videos or in these spaces, and I'm giving you real world experience that every trader worth their salt knows exactly what I'm saying is the gospel. It is the absolute defining moment for you finding consistency, because if you can't wrangle yourself in, and overcome yourself, it matters not who you trade with, who taught you, what you use for your trading methodology, how much you have, how many funded accounts you have, what company, what your payout scale is. Fucking means nothing. Because you're going to unravel yourself. You will unravel yourself, plain and simple, because you want perfect rose petal pathways where you don't have to worry about ever stumping your toe. No paper cuts for you. No drawdown. And th the market owes you something. It's looking out for you. When in fact, none of that's true. And then when you finally come to grips with the first stages of seeing that is the case, where the market is not easy, the market is trying to chew you up and spit you out. It's not an invitation for you to go in and get rich. When you discover that and you're in a trade, and you know damn well that you need to have it, you're going to do what human beings do. The opposite of what should be done. Don't walk on the grass. ICT's moonwalking across it. It's human nature. Tell me I can't do something. I'm going to do it. There's no shame in it. I'm being honest. I'm a human being. We're designed to be what we are. And we have to work our whole lives becoming better. And I have not obtained perfection yet. And none of you listening have arrived there either. But in trading, I know where my thresholds are, where I know that the egotistical, pompous 20-year-old boy that thought he owned the world, I know that feeling, that little itch inside that says, okay, it shouldn't be doing this. It should not be doing that. So there's your warning sign. So what are you going to do? You got one more opportunity. And I put a time filter in. I say, okay, this candle or the next one, it's got to start delivering. And if it doesn't give it to me, or if it breaks a PD array, like in other words, think about it like this. If I have a fair value gap that I have my stop beneath and I'm long, I am trusting that that fair value gap is the catch-all. It's the, the, the thing that's buffering me from being stopped out, and I'm trusting it. Preferably, I have one or two more PD arrays, whether it be a volume imbalance, a bullish order block, above that fair value gap. If I lose two of those PD arrays and it goes into that fair value gap, that's a warning sign for me because it just caved in three levels of what I would deem a support. 
not classical support resistance bullshit, things that from a order flow idea, it would not go down there if it was bullish where my stop is. If you watch that video, well, I can't learn from these videos. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, just, you know, I'd rather have the four hour long videos where he just drones on and on and on. Okay. But those short little videos are me putting the rubber, meeting the road. That's it. That's me doing all the things I talk about. If I never showed you executions, <laughs> then I'm just a talker. But if I'm doing this shit that I'm telling you to do, I'm walking the walk. I'm showing you precision. I'm showing you trade management. I'm showing you stop placement, managing the stop. And I'm also teaching you if there's something that I experience as the trader, as you will too, what does that feel like? How will you know? You'll know. You'll know because it will feel like you're about to find out your spouse cheated on you. You know that when you open that door up, you're going to see something that you will never forget, and it's going to scar you. You know holding on to that trade is going to be a very similar experience. But you won't let go of it because you're wrestling with who? Your broker going to say, no, you can't get out of the trade. Fuck you. you this is the way it is. Don't call here. Don't, don't push the button. We're not going to let you get out of it. This is the way it is. You, you made your bed laying, laying it. That's not that's not what's happening. But you would be convincing yourself at the time that there's no way out of this. There's no way out of this trade. I have to hold on to it. My whole livelihood, my whole identity rests on this trade's outcome. You've elevated this entire existence as a trader in that one transaction. You're squirming around. You're bitching. You're cussing. You're throwing shit around. You're, you, you don't want to talk to your spouse. You, you hate everything. You had dinner plans later on. You ain't going now. This is what happens when you get in this market. It shows you your ugly side. And as nice as some of you people are, I'm sure you were very, very pleasant. It will show you the monster that's in you. That ugly person. The one that you like to pretend doesn't exist. Every one of us have it. Every single person has it. And you have to master that person. You're never, ever mastering the market. I'm never going to master the market. I'm never going to be a master of the market. You know what I am a master of? Me. I might go off the rails, get chemically imbalanced for a few minutes or so, Cuss and rant and rave, and then it subsides and I go the other direction again. But I master me. I can't trade in a state of mania. I have to physically walk away. I, I can't, can't even look at the charts. Because in my mind, I'm, I'm in that Russell Crowe gladiator shit. Like, I'm in there. I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> I'm going to lay waste to everybody. And I'm going to have a bloodlust in there. And I might do something and not feel the pain that I would feel if I was more focused, like I felt today. I seen what I was doing, and my expectation in the marketplace was not panning out. It was stalling, stalling, and stalling. And I watched it take out several PD arrays that, in my opinion, were warning signs. So that's why I said, okay, if it starts stalling again and it's not delivering when I want it to deliver, a time filter starts. It's like a little clock. You know, it's this candle or the next. So it's two minutes. You know, two minutes, if it doesn't start moving for me in, in my favor, I'm peeling something off. And then when I take the uh, trade lower in terms of my risk, if I had five contracts on or whatever it is, but at that time today, I had five remaining on, I took one of them off. I didn't feel at ease about it. So I took another one off, felt no change in it, took one more off. I said, that's it. If I'm going to take three off, I'm just going to take it all the way down to one, leave one on and then see what happens. And then it went down and stopped me out. Who cares? At that point, I've done the right thing. I did the right thing. I listened to my analyst, that 
smarter part of me that tells me what I should and shouldn't do. I allowed the trader, that is inner circle trader, to listen to the analyst, which is Michael. Michael is the person that has the shit figured out. ICT is the one out there that wants to be Russell Crowe and slay everybody. Ratchet ICT, which is who you hear on here, <laughs> I got to keep him at bay because when I get manic, that's the guy that will put me in drawdown and I got to work to fix that shit. So you're always going to be wrestling that internally because you're made up of three people, the analyst, the trader, and the gambler. So when I am paying attention to all these symptoms that a market condition or trade is presenting to me, if I'm distracting myself with you know, stupid toxic thinking, what if it does this and what if I'm wrong? Fuck that. Is it doing what I'm expecting it to do? If it's not, then what's it doing? Telling me I got to lighten the load on my position. But you're supposed to only take partials when it's moving in your favor. That's what you're aiming to do. Are you going to argue and say that taking something off to manage the emotion, the psychological position that you're, you're wrestling with? I can't make the market go up, no matter how mad or uncomfortable or impatient I become. You can't either. But when you, when you get caught up in that moment, it feels like that's the right thing to be worrying about. And what you're doing is you're trying any fucking way to distract yourself from the discomfort of what you're going through at that moment. That's what's really going on. That's the very thing, that piercing pain of frustration and anxiety and impatience. You're trying to distract yourself because you know what you should do and you won't. When the skilled trader, the one that's seasoned and learned how to deal with this stuff over years of doing it, lost money, lost accounts, and figured out, oh, well, these are periods where I fuck up and I got to stop doing that. When I see times when there cannot be any hesitation, no hesitation whatsoever, you have to just know that this is the right thing to do. And if it would have run, like, well, look what happened today. It eventually went to 39.85 and there, thereabouts, but it didn't go there before taking my stop. It could have just kept on going higher and never went to my stop. And I could have closed the trade entirely. And I still would be talking to you like I am today right now. Because you have to know yourself. You have to know what you're going to be thinking, how you're going to react. And young man, I'm telling you, those are not the moments where you want to pony up and cowboy up. Oh, I'm going to stick with this. Take my stop loss off. Open my stop up more. Trade larger into the into the losing position that I know is likely to materialize. You don't want to do that. It's going to feel like you should do it. Because you're going to treat it like a video game. And this shit ain't a video game. This stuff will put you in Pooresville. Working the rest of your life type shit. And it's something that you can manage your way out of. As soon as you feel that discomfort, the tendency to think irrationally about it, your breath increases in its rate of inhale and exhale. You're starting to hyperventilate slowly. You don't realize it yet, but you feel it. You're looking around, your palms are sweating. You're irritable. You're hoping that nobody around you says anything to you. And worse off, if you're doing this at work, you can lose your job because of the way you're reacting. You're not doing your job already because you're trading. You're distracted. You're stealing from your boss, the company that's gainfully pay paying you with your employment. You're trying to play casino. And now you know sh you should get up from the table and walk away. And you are that Ferrari in neutral with the gas pedal floored, ready to go, but you won't do it. You won't simply let go of it because you think that that only will be a sign of weakness. If it would have moved in your favor after you got out, you would have said, see, I failed. I didn't hold on to it when I was feeling uncomfortable. I'm telling you, when you feel uncomfortable and it starts physically manifesting in you, you get out of the trade. 
through partials or entirely. There is no shame in that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's how you coach yourself through growing pains. And it's also how you keep your account solvent. Because you will lose control of yourself unless you control yourself. The broker's not going to do it for you. Watching my videos, me talking to you right now, it's not going to do it for you. It doesn't, it doesn't do it for you. You can sit there and nod your head and say, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yep. And you're going to end up in a situation and none of this is going to do anything for you. You might even remember me talking about it when it happens. You're like, shit, here it is. I'm in that moment. He's talking about fuck ICT. I'm going in. I'm, I'm holding on to it. That's when regret comes in. And then what happens is the fear and anxiety about just getting out of it. And what if it moves in my favor? If I got out, I'll be wrong there too. Oh, is replaced with, I got to get it back. I got to get it back. Like I, I lost something there. I lost a potential profitable trade there. And I got to do it on the next one because that one wasn't right, but I got to go out and do it again in something else. This currency pair didn't do it. This one now is the one that's going to do it. Let me jump over here and do that. That's another reason why I tell you to focus on one or two pairs. Because if you have 28 pairs listening to people on Twitter that aren't profitable, teaching don't take partials, and they watch all these different markets, let me tell you something. I am not a genius, okay? I'm not a mental giant. I am aware that even if I didn't have the mental baggage I have, okay, I don't believe I could physically track 28 markets and realistically be able to do what I do. It's just too, it's too many, it's too many things to consider. So it's better for you to learn on one market, regardless if you're a Forex trader. And I know some of you are like, you know, can you get back to Forex? I'll get back to Forex when I want to get back to Forex. I'm teaching students how to trade and everything that I'm teaching here with E-mini S&P is applicable to Forex. It's all same thing. It's price. And the things I'm teaching you about managing yourself and the psychological lessons and money management and risk management and trade management, all those things are going to be factors that you're going to have to contend with, whether you're trading Forex, crypto, or whatever the hell you want to trade. You have to manage yourself. Some of you young people that are single, you're trading body fluids on the weekend and you can't control yourself there. You have to control yourself here. You must control yourself here. No one can help you with that. It's something that you do individually. You own it. And it's uncomfortable when you find out that you aren't as strong in the areas that you were expecting it to be. I'm going to know how to do this and I'm going to pick the right trades. I'm going to pick the right order blocks, the right fair value gaps. I'm going to have no fear getting in the trade. Great. That's a good start. Now, once you get in there and it doesn't move for you, the real learning starts. How do you know when to hold on to the trade? See, all, all the teachings that I've done and all the lecturing, and I'm talking all the way back to 1996. That's when I first started teaching. That whole, <laughs> that whole time, it is astonishing to me that folks don't ask how to overcome these moments. It's like they they block it out. Like they know it exists in their own trading. And then by I guess by asking that, they feel like that's a weakness. They'll ask, how do you pick the right order block? How do you know when the fair value gap stays open? How do you know when market structure is really not a stop hunt? See. Most of my students will ask questions like that because it's not something that's pointed. It doesn't take anything out of them or, well, require a blood offering. <laughs> something that you had to go through in terms of uncomfortable misery, discomfort. It's like you're, you know, it's there, but you don't want to bring it up. 
that I'm comfortable. I should get out of the trade. I don't know what to do. Let me move my stop. Let me take my stop off. Holding on to a loser. You know, the folks that are here listening, you know you've had that. And it's uncomfortable hearing about it. You're like, man, can you get off the subject? It reminds me of an ex. I can't, I can't, I can't vibe with you when you're doing this. This ain't a vibe. This is growth. This is learning how to be impeccable with risk management, knowing yourself. Because all the entry techniques are useless. It's shit. If you don't know how to manage yourself. If you can't recognize when the market is no longer likely to deliver where you need it to deliver, and it's more likely to hit your stop loss, you need to know what you're going to do. And it needs to be consistent every single time. You don't think about it. It's just a matter of when you touch something hot and it burns, what do you do? You retract your hand right, right, real quick. Boom. Your brain is telling your arm, get your finger away from that hot ass shit right now. You don't even think about it. Your brain just says, there it is. It's second nature. In trading, as soon as you pick up that you're in a position that now is not high probability and you're spending a whole lot of emotion, a whole lot of psychological equity, you're worrying about it. Whereas when you put a trade on, in the beginning, I'm not saying you won't have these feelings and these concerns about whether or not you're going to be right or wrong because that's normal. But eventually when you know what your model is and you get experience doing it, you're not going to be afraid to push the button. You're not going to be afraid to put your stop loss there. But when you get into those positions where it feels like it's probably not going to pan out for you, the worst thing that you could be doing, the worst thing is showing people that you're in that trade. And then it materializes. It's usually the guys that'll send me something. They got a trade on. It's already in profit. They have their stop loss, but they just put on because it wasn't on the whole time they had the trade open. <laughs> you think I don't see that shit? I'm in there. I'm in the room with you. I know what you're doing. Okay. And you're just right before your limit order is taken or would have been taken. And then it's uncanny. It's uncanny how immediately that one minute chart starts consolidating and pulling back into a fair value gap that you don't expect. And now you're feeling it. You're thinking, shit, why the fuck did I just send that tweet to ICT? Man, I am flipping out here. I should have hit my target by now. He's watching me. Everybody else is watching me. The trolls are going to troll me now. Uh, what are you doing? You're not managing your trade. You're not managing your trade. And you're making your trade, my trade, Twitter's trade, and the trolls trade. And guess what? We're all winning. We're in a free trade. When you lose, it costs us nothing. When you win, it doesn't mean anything to us. We're neutral. We don't care. One way or the other. Delta neutral. We don't have any. We don't, we don't care. But now you do. More than you did before you sent that tweet. You've invited chaos and it always shows up it's never fucking late to the party it's showing up no matter whether you want it there or not you invite it it's coming and live streaming when you can't trade and you're emotionally unstable and you're trying to have a vendetta you're gonna shit the bed and you're proving it you are a recipe for classic toxic unprofitable trading Vinny. Just stop. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop lying and saying I've done things that I didn't do. Everybody sees I can trade. Everybody knows it now. But they're also watching you do more harm to your brand than you doing it to yourself. Just stop. Just stop. There's no need for what you're doing. Everybody that's coming to my Twitter talking shit, explain what I've been showing you. Explain what I've been calling beforehand. It's not cherry picking. I am here just trying to help. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be Billy Badass. But if you want to be a victim of that, get in that Robin's Cup officially. 
I have no problem. I won't even badmouth you when I'm beating the fuck out of you in it. I won't even say nothing nasty. I'll just quietly just do it. That's not why I'm here this year. I'm here to let you know how to do this. And some of you are wasting the opportunity. You're wasting it. And you won't realize you've wasted it until next year when I'm not doing it. I wish I would have. Wish I would have is something you can't do anything with. And when you're trading and you have these tug of wars of knowing the probabilities have shifted, you do not open your stop up to take on more risk. If you've limited it by moving it up or down in deference to your trade, you stick with it. You've done the job as the trader. The analyst in you said, trim the risk. You executed on it. You rolled the stop. You've took partials. Now, the analyst is queuing up and saying, hey, watch this. This is an area where it should be moving. Pay attention to it because if it doesn't, you need to start taking the risk off or bail. That's the internal dialogue that I'm having. Leaning on experience. I mean, I'm not hearing a voice say do this, but it's just I'm trying to personify it for you so you understand the, the dialogue between how I lean on my own experience that serves me well and how I encounter that with opposition and price action. If I trade every single day and I'm trying to do it every day, I don't like, I don't pursue this as a trader, but because I'm mentoring, I'm teaching you all. And sometimes I think like I was talking to my son before I came up here, he goes, dad, is there ever a day you aren't trading? I said, when I'm teaching, no, but in trading, I don't want to be trading every day. Like I don't, I want it to be where I don't have a condition like I had today. I can find profitability just about in any day, but it doesn't mean I won't encounter a stop out or losing trade here and there if I force myself to trade every single day. If I say I'm going to go in today and take a trade, I'm going to trade the morning session, I'm going to trade the afternoon session, I'm going to do it every single day. Invariably, I'm going to have a series of losing trades sprinkled across the month. It doesn't mean I'm drawing down to 90% drawdown. <laughs> okay. This whole business, you're never going to see ICT show a 90 day track record. Okay, no problem. But I want to see yours too. But I'll show you mine first. Don't worry. I'll do that. But it's not going to prove anything when that's done too. It's not going to prove anything. You're going to say I had somebody at Trading View help me out. <laughs> oh, shit. There's so, I mean, you can see who's really, really in control of themselves in this industry. The ones that are chatting to me constantly, constantly chatting to me or chatting about me. You know damn well these people are miserable. Like they're miserable. They, I, I, I am not worrying about you fucking people until you tweet to me. I'm not worrying about it. So you don't want to grow into this toxic thinking. But these individuals are their poster boys for what not to do in trading. It's not a team sport. There are no heroes. I'm not a hero. I'm not a titan. I'm not a goat. The goat. I'm not the king of the charts. <laughs> All that bullshit. I am trying my best to continuously deliver things that you're going to encounter as a trader. And it's my goal is to simply just help you. That's all. That's all I want to do. I want to help you. Because when I stop in December and I say my final, you know, there it is. Happy New Year as we go into 2024. ICT is not doing what you're seeing him do. ICT is being husband 99% of the time. That's what I'm doing. And I'm with you every day. I'm pouring myself into lessons that you're going to see. I'm preparing even the live streams. You know, I, I pointed to where it was going to go today. If you were just paying attention to the live stream, just look at it. It's still there. Just go on the YouTube channel. Look it up. 
it's right there. Just go into live sessions, click it, and you'll see there's a small little, I don't even know what it's titled, but uh, it's right there on the chart. It's the only annotation on the chart. 39.45, buy side liquidity. But that's probably luck too. That's cherry picked. <clears throat> You're going to have struggling points in your learning. And the best thing you can do is expect them. Expect them in these instances and know how to deal with them early on. I didn't learn this from a book. I've read Mark Douglas's book. I've read all kinds of other trade psychology books and things that mention certain things. And like I mentioned before, Alexander Elder's book, Trading for a Living, the first half of that book, before he even starts to talk about charts, that, that whole business about wrestling with oneself and everything that he talks about in that first half of that book, that is worth more than Mark Douglas's book. Because it talks about real root issues as humans. Whereas Mark Douglas will talk about trade-related things. No, 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 no. You got to get to the core root cause of things. Alcoholism, substance abuse, uh, inferiority complexes, superiority complexes. Bullying. Were you a bully when you were a kid? Were you bullied as a kid? You'd think you'd know them by looking at how they act today on social media. Toxic. Toxic. And you're trying to be a mentor, trying to run a business, and you're chatting to me, making memes and photoshops. You're about to see me right on Corb's show. I'm slated to be uh, with him on the 30th of January. I'm not sure if he does the same day broadcast or whatever, but uh, you're going to find out. That you don't, you're not going to see a bald fat guy. <laughs> nope, that's not, that's not who I am. <laughs> But that's okay. You know, surprises galore in this, this year. But I want you to do well. I do want to see you do well. And I want you to understand that some of these problems that creep in, which are normal, they're opportunities for you to be excellent as a trader. Know exactly why you're doing something. Not, should I, shouldn't I? I'm afraid to make a decision. Fuck that. When it has to do with money, you're never wrong cutting the risk entirely. There's no shame in that. And anybody teaches you that that's a problem or you're a pussy. Oh, look at you. Look at you. You can't hold your trade. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. Huh? These people aren't making money. People that are making money aren't running around trolling other people about not making money. I'm making fucking money, folks. Okay. I'm in my own lane. I'm teaching people all over the place. Okay. I'm showing it. I'm proving it. I'm calling it. I'm executing it. I'm showing it. And these other people aren't showing shit. They're in drawdown. Consider your source. That's all I'm asking. Just be reasonable. If you want to learn, you want to do it the right way, I'm teaching you that. It's not always get me a trade entry. Show me the new magical voodoo technique of getting in there and doing something that nobody else does. Because that's what everybody wants to do right now. They want my new magic trick and go rename it and make a course with it. When the better thing for you to learn is how to manage yourself. You're constantly in this state of chasing something. When you're supposed to be spending the time this year diving into yourself. I did not understand how much of a impediment I was to my own success early on. I, I all the time looked at outward excuses. I blamed my first wife that you know, she left me. I, I, I used that guilt. Oh, I, no wonder I couldn't make any money. You know, she left me and I'm... You know, I'm distracted by that. That's bullshit. That was bullshit. Because every night when I was studying, I was motivated by thinking I'd win her back. So that wasn't it. It was just a perfect excuse. When I would blow my account, I would say, oh, well, you know, it's because her. She's already with somebody else. 
she ain't seen me. I ain't slept with her. She didn't cheat on me again. That's a dead issue. But the human in me wanted to take the fault and place it on something else but me. And my inability to have enough experience to know what I should know. You learn this lesson if you're able to trade with real money long enough. When you get in those painted into a corner type scenarios, like you have nowhere to go and you feel like you're trapped when you're not. Just get out of the trade. Close it. As soon as you start worrying about the outcome of the trade, as soon as it becomes a worrisome thing and it's a, it's a source of anxiety or discomfort physically and it's manifesting physically, that's the surest sign that you need to get out. Close the trade and don't even go back in the same day and have no regrets about that. There's nothing wrong with that. But everybody on social media will fucking tell you it's your, your weak you're a pussy. You can't do this because look how soft you are. You're not hard. Let me tell you something. You can go real, real hard into the poorhouse. Trying to overdo something. And you're insisting it's going to be your way. And you lose sight of what it is you're supposed to be doing. You're there to make money. You're not there to win friends and influence people. When you look at social media, that's what trading is. Get more followers, get more likes, get worshipped. He's got more comments in the section of his videos than I do. He's got more followers than me. When real traders, like real people that do this and do it well, that's the focus. That's it. I don't want to see your glad handing comments. I don't care if you like my posts. I'm going to still do them. <laughs> I don't care if you stay in the whole Twitter space and leave early or say I talk on about dumb shit. I don't give a fuck. I mute you or, or block you. That's the way it is. I don't need to see your bullshit. But you can't do that with your own trades. That's the That's the wrestling point that I want you to understand. When the market is not doing something that you want it or expect it to do, and you're in a trade, you have to make a decision. You're at a crossroads. What do you do? What are you going to do? What is the process that you are always going to go through? First rule, am I physically feeling discomforted by this? Is it physically affecting me? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm 50. I have, when I was... 36, when's it, 2009, March 9th, 2009, I wrecked that bike, it was like 2012, yeah, 2012, I was trading, and I got into a trade that really wasn't that big, but then I started worrying about the outcome of it. And it was not even that big of a deal. And I tried to close the trade and it wouldn't take my order. So immediately, my left side of my face got numb, started tingling. And I'm like, oh shit, that's weird. And I felt like my eye, my left eye was like, like if you put your finger on your outside edge of where your eye meets your eyelashes, I guess, you know, at the end of your eyebrow, it felt like, Someone had their fingertip right there and just slightly just pulling it away from the corner of my eye. And it was all tingling. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is that? And it felt like it was moving down into the corner of my lip, all on the left-hand side. And the more I thought about it, and the more I started thinking about, oh, no, is this a stroke? Because my father has had multiple strokes. His father literally died from a stroke when my father went to jail. He got arrested and, and he's serving two consecutive life sentences plus 20 years. And then I don't know how many years he got for breaking out of the Maryland Penitentiary in 80-something, whatever it was. But uh, when they showed the newspaper of my dad being arrested for a contract murder, my grandfather saw the paper and his head just slumped over, done, just like that. Stroke just took him out real quick, boom. So in my family, strokes are an issue. I mean, it's a thing that goes – that and diabetes – so 
my first thought was, am I having a stroke? And what triggered it was something unexpected. I couldn't get out of the trade. The, the broker would not, it wouldn't, it wouldn't let me close. Okay. It's not that big of a deal. Even if, even if it would have moved on me and took the stop, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But that sense of I'm not in control. I'm not in control and I can't fix it. Triggered instantly a body symptom. You might have this similar thing happen. I didn't have a stroke, by the way. I went to the hospital. Everything's checked out. Heart was fine. Brain was fine. No issues. Thank you, Jesus. But long, long story short these body symptoms are going to manifest themselves through anxiety, fear, depression, and anxiety. Those three triggers are going to cause you to have irrational fear, uncontrollable fear, and sometimes fear so gripping and terrifying that you're convinced that you're about to die. Now, how are you going to be able to navigate the marketplace if that happens to you? If you feel that sense of impending doom and in, in, in any time you're dropping dead. Like I, when I was feeling that, I was like, how embarrassing would it be if my wife finds me laying here dead? <laughs> like that's embarrassing. And that caused more anxiety. Like what the fuck? If I'm dead, I'm going to worry about it. Right. But that's irrational thoughts. And when you get caught up in that state of panic, because the market's not doing what you want to do, you're going to think irrationally. So you have to have a process that's written out, preferably at your trade desk, in front of you on the wall, laminated. If shit goes upside down, do this. My protocol is this. Take something off. Does it subside? If it doesn't, take more off. If it doesn't work, Take it down to the smallest position size, which is what I did today. If that doesn't subside it, then you close the trade and have no regrets about it and be done. Who gives a shit if it goes up parabolic or drops you know, parabolic? Who cares? You have to be balanced. And that sounds crazy coming from me because I'm not chemically balanced. <laughs> but listen, I know my shit, okay? I know, I know what is going to be the barriers for you. And most of you that keep coming back to me, you know, I know my shit because you have experienced it. And you're also experiencing now consistency, profitability. You can find the winning, the winning trades. You're making money now. Okay. So I've won you over and I'm increasing that level of understanding by telling you, it's not a weakness for you to be able to pull the plug when it's time. Like it's those trading environments. You should have no regrets about euthanizing that trade. Just completely take it out. Pull the plug on it. It's no longer in a position where it can affect you. Walk away from it. How many trades have you seen me execute on just this year? Daily. What if half of them were just me taking some of it off in partials and then pulling the plug and never got to the, the end result? Would that be losing? No. Not at all. I wouldn't feel like that was a, a losing trader. No one should look at that as a failed mentor teacher because it's still building the bottom line up. Finding setups, engaging them, and following the logic that would lead to proper trade management. But if you don't have these protocols in place and making room for a process that you don't panic and you need to have it written out. Why written out? Because you're going to look around your room when you're in that moment of panic. You're going to reach for those things that make you feel comfortable. For me, it's a deck of cards. When I start fidgeting, you know, I, I do shuffling, you know, I fan them, I deal them. Like I'm, I deal 21 hands to myself and a hand in front of me and I play 21. I distract myself when I'm feeling that. And if I can't focus on following through on the trade idea, then I have to start taking something off the trade. Here's little fidget spinners. I have a couple of them. As soon as you start spinning that thing and you just, you feel like you want to spin it faster than you ever spend it before. It's telling you something. That's a manifestation physically that you're trying to do what you're trying to exert your will 
on something other than the market that who's right now ignoring you. You want that market to bend to your will. It's not going to fucking bend to your will. So stop thinking that. You must bend to its will. And everybody on social media is trying to communicate that they don't ever have that problem. And that is horse shit. That's bullshit. That's why you do not see them consistently. That's why you see them hiding shit. Deleting their streams when they lose. Not updating their MyFX book. That's shit is showing you that they're wrestling with things. They're wrestling with things, just like you, just like me, because trading is mental chess with yourself. And it gets back to like, the question I asked on, I can't remember what the, <laughs> SoundCloud. Is it SoundCloud? No, I'm wondering if I even said that right. I did these like, uh, are you deserving? That uh, that whole presentation I gave about that. Are you are you in a position where you feel like you deserve to be successful? Because much like an abusive relationship does to the abused, they feel like they don't deserve anything but the abuse after being been abused over and over again. You feel like, well, this is the way it is, and you freeze up, and you just want that shiny white knight to come in there, and some magical good fairy of good luck comes in there and sprinkles the good dust of good luck on your outcome, and you weather it, and you get out by the skin of your teeth. That's not going to happen in trading. There's no Santa Claus, okay? There's no 4X Jesus isn't coming in there. God's not up there listening to you praying. Please get me out of this trade. The fact that he's given you the physical manifestations, that's him telling you, get out of the trade. <laughs> I mean, I'll believe God exists when he shows up. Well, he's showing up in physical manifestations. He's speaking to you through your conscience. Close the trade. Get out of the trade. You're in something that's toxic and you're trying to hold on to it. But I love him. He beats me, but I love him. He's cheated on me, but I love him. Get out of that toxic relationship. That trade is a toxic relationship. It's a go nowhere, dead end relationship. You're going to get nothing from that relationship. It's just going to suck more blood from you. And it's going to make you feel drained. And you're not going to be able to be energetic to take the next good trade that forms because you are now further abused and damaged. You're damaged goods now. So tomorrow when the market sets up a beautiful setup, because you wrestled, which you felt like it was, this is the right thing to do. I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to my, my guns. I'm going to go out with, you know, with everything. And I'm fighting hard for this trade to work out because I need to feel like I'm going to be accomplished and successful. And you're doing everything wrong. The best money managers in, in the world are the ones that says, fuck it. This isn't a good. I'm closing it. And that's it. There's no more. They're not regretting it. They're not thinking about it. Running scenarios. What if it would? They're done. Next. Next. What's the next one? Next. You have to treat your bad trades or questionable trades that you're in. As soon as they start manifesting physically in you. You have to have a process. It has to be written. It must be visible where you are trading. Another reason why you don't trade on your phone. I'm riding the bus home. This got me 50 pips. Forex king. Whoop, whoop. Holla. No, you are literally gambling. You're gambling. Because here's what's going to happen one day when you're doing this. Ask me how I know. <laughs> you're going to be out in the public. You're going to be minding your own business. Your wife's going to be predis predisposed and distracted with Victoria's Secret's bra sale. You're just minding your own business, walking around. You're not being trying to be creepy. You don't care about the panties and the things all around you. You're in your phone, mind your business on MT4. 
no problem, no harm, no foul. You're going to put the trade on. You're going to be managing it. Okay. Then shit's going to go upside down. And you're going to be looking around and you're going to be pacing back and forth. And now everyone around you is going to be looking at you thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? You're not trying to be next to your wife because you don't want her to see that you're on that MT4 again. You're walking around. You're breathing a little bit heavy. You're pacing back and forth. You're getting ready to steal something, aren't you? You're getting ready to take those friggin' panties and stick them in your coat pocket and run out the store, aren't you? That's what everybody's going to be thinking you're going to do. And now you're going to be thinking about that or something to that effect, like I was. <laughs> and I can't even focus on the trade I'm in. I can't even do it. So that's just going to creep in. Something like that. Did you didn't even expect nothing like that? But the real world and shit that comes out of left field is going to pop into your trading. And you're not going to have what? The process protocol that you follow in front of you because you're holding your phone or you might get lack of service internet you're in a you're in an area where you can't get connection you don't think it's going to happen it's happened it's happened to me a lot i don't trade on my phone unless i'm in the bed and i'm hooked up to my wi-fi here i'll do an example like that where it's something simple short little type thing nothing big just to get your attention, to focus on something other than what you're worrying about. But you have to have it written down. How are you going to process and work through a protocol that's written out? How are you going to be able to weather, compensate, cope, or euthanize that toxic trade? I told you what mine is. If it doesn't start painting out in a time frame, in my mind, once I feel those physical symptoms, I'm, 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 dis, I'm disgusted by the fact that this market's not moving to the will of ICT. How dare this son of a bitch sit around here in Hemet Hall and not move to my target? I'm recording this. It should be doing what I wanted to do. That's what's going on in my head today. I'm watching it. That's what's in my head. So as soon as I feel that, I said, okay, time, time to put a timeline on it. Two minutes. This candle or the next, it needs to start showing it to me. It doesn't. Okay, start peeling it off. I got five contracts, one off. Do I feel any better about it? Nope. All the way down to the smallest one. Now I don't care. I don't care what the outcome is going to be. Because I've taken as much as I can take off that trade. Because it's not going to go higher and drops from where I got out on my partials and leave one contract remaining. Who's going to argue and say that was the bad decision to do? Because I got out at the best case scenario I could have with the four contracts that I peeled off that weren't going any higher. And if I would have held on to them, it would have been a full stop out on five contracts. That's a winning trade. But it didn't go to your 39.45 level, ICT. You were wrong. I have 8,000. One hundred and or nine thousand one hundred eighty-seven dollars of evidence in that demo account. That if I did those things any other way, that wouldn't be the case. That wouldn't be the result of it. So you can argue about all the things that don't matter and never grow and improve your mindset about how you're going to endeavor and work yourself through these moments that every trader is going to have for the rest of their career. You're going to have these moments where your trade isn't panning out and you're going to have to wrestle with it. This is the reason why I tell you, don't make the public your partner in trading. Social media is not your partner in your trading business. That's why these same people are floundering and failing and they're bent out of shape because they feel it and they can't get out of the situation because if they stop doing what they're doing, they know what the public's going to say. Oh, look at you. You stop putting your MyFX book up there. Sam, listen to me. Okay. All the bullshit aside, I would whoop your ass in that competition, any competition. I would beat your shit silly. Here's my best advice to you. Stop making your MyFX book public. Just do it for the rest of the year. And then at the end of the year, show it. I promise you, you will do better. You'll do better. 
the guy Corbs. I like. I, I keep promoting him all the time. I, I think he's a wonderful personality for this industry. He doesn't get out there and brag. He doesn't pretend to be something he's not. I think he's a pretty likable guy. And he tried doing live sessions and trading live. And I physically felt uncomfortable for him. When I was talking earlier, when he when I was talking about the trader that's throwing his glasses across the room and pitching shit around, he's who I was thinking of. And I know in his mind he was thinking, fuck, why am I on this fucking live stream doing this in front of everybody? And I told him, I don't think what you're doing is the most efficient way of doing what it is you're trying to be as a trader. I have no problems with someone trading, recording something, or not even recording and saying, here's the trade I did, and here's the proof of it, either with a broker statement or something to the effect of showing their entire trade history. I don't need to do that. I can fucking trade and record it. And then I'll show you everything afterwards too. But I'm also going to tell you why I'm going to do it before I'm doing the trade. So I'm doing well beyond my FX book. But Corbs, he literally was out there going through it, wrestling with it. Who? What? What was he contending with? Himself. I guarantee you, he was thinking to himself, oh, man, if I, if I stop doing this, they're going to think I'm not a good trader. And that's why I told him publicly in those live streams, I said, in my opinion, it's not shameful for you to not do this. If you do a trade, show your executions later on and the logic as to why you did it. Real traders will recognize that. Anybody else that wants to talk about it and talk all kinds of bullshit, fuck them in their opinion. They're nobodies. They're going to work on Monday. They're going to be hoping they get a week's vacation. Their opinions don't mean shit. And then when he stopped, his results, his results improved again. Why? Because the pressure's off. Like, I felt that. <laughs> I felt that when I was with my first mentorship group. I had 836 people. And they're all coming at me saying, answer this and answer that and look at this and look at that. And you know how I am. I like to overdo it. Like I'm trying to make sure I pour everything I got in me into you. And I'm feeling guilty because there's no way I can humanly respond to all of them. And then also on top of it, focus on the marketplace in front of me. It was honestly, I thought I was going to be able to do it. I really thought I was going to be able to do that. And I was like, what the fuck? I can't focus on anything. Like, I literally felt like I had a thousand voices screaming in my ear. I couldn't hear any of them. It was only them just zipping by like a like a chat window when I was doing uh, the hell was that program? Go to webinar. Yeah, go to webinar. 800 people. Now, obviously, not all 800 was sending me messages at the same time, but a lot of them were. And they would repeat and say, look, you're not answering my question. And I'm like, fuck, fuck. I wanted to be anywhere else but that place at that time because I, I couldn't I couldn't get out. Of it. I was in that very thing that it feels like when you're in a trade and you can't you can't do what you know you should do. You can't just kill it. So. You need to have a process. Of making sure that you guard your mind. Because this is hard shit. Because you are trying to ignore the inevitable temporary failures that this business is going to present to you and everybody in it. You're going to lose. You're going to lose money. You're going to get stopped out. You're going to take a trade and it never gets to any profitability. It's going to just rip right into your stock. You're going to press buy when you really wanted to go in and go short. That's a stupid error. But you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to go into a trade. And forget the calendar has something getting ready to come on. Hope it ain't CPI. <laughs> and as soon as you get in and you realize you did it wrong, get the fuck out. Just don't even worry about arguing about it. Just get out. You have to have a process. And the process is first rule of this in industry, preserve capital. When in doubt, get the fuck out. You cannot... You cannot fuck around and stay in this market in a position that you don't even understand why you're in, while you're holding on to something that you know is 
highly unlikely to pan out profitable and more likely to go to your stop. You're convinced of it because that's all you could see happening. You're worrying about that tick that's next to come after the next adjustment in the market price. And you're watching it go closer and closer to your stop. Just four more points and it'll be stopping you out. Just three and a half more points and it's going to stop you out. You're not thinking about, is it showing me signs that it wants to continue in the direction I traded in? You're not looking at that. So as soon as you abandon your trade idea and you start taking your attention to worrying about the stop loss getting hit, that is the surest sign that you need to kill the trade. That is the easiest, absolute, no-brainer, it wins every time, get out. Because if you give yourself enough time, let me train you over this year. I'm going to teach you exactly how to identify that bullshit. And you need to be able to say, I'm not thinking about it. It's just the way it is. It's a process. As soon as I feel that shit, I'm done. I'm out. No more risk. I'm not going to trade the rest of that day. I'll come back tomorrow and see how I feel about it. And you're going to feel good that you've killed that pain. You need to understand that that's seizing control over yourself, your reckless self. That part of you that will fuck you up in this marketplace, that person needs to be held down, curb stomped sometimes. Because you're going to put yourself in harm's way if you don't. And when you get to the point where you see this as a strength, you will not feel like you're abusing yourself or denying yourself success. You're giving yourself the chance that it must, it must be done for you to have a real chance at being successful in this. There's no safety net. None. In that instance, you are losing all control and you're falling into failure. You're falling into it. You could stop at any time, grab a hold of something and pre you know, preserve yourself from falling into a full stop and regret because you, you will get stopped out. And when it does, you're going to think to yourself, I knew it was going to stop me out and I could have kept myself from losing. I should have just killed it. And you're going to do that for hours and days and weeks, beating yourself up. Let me explain something to you. This is what you don't understand. These fucking clowns out there that make up shit, and Photoshop and meme and bullshit and make it all kinds of lies about me. None of these people could ever say anything to hurt me. None of them. I am the hardest critic of myself than any of you fuckers could ever be. You, you can't do shit to me. If I don't do something the smallest scale of what I think I should have done, I beat myself up about that. I can't let those things go because I have obsessive compulsive disorder. It's not something that is fixed. You can't fix that. You have to cope with it. You live with it. But I'm not worried about these fucking clowns. And you're going to have these problems creep into your trading. And you're going to have to be met with can you deal with that? Can you deal with these uncomfortable feelings of you can't control this? The outcome is outside of your control. The, the market's going to take something from you. Are you going to wrestle with that? Are you going to compensate and put a blind eye to it? Say, oh, you know, I don't see it there. And then fault me or someone else, your spouse, your job. Somebody else was the reason why you didn't do what the fuck you were supposed to do. Because now you have no excuse. Now you know what you're supposed to do. It's easy. It's easy. Just let go of it. There's plenty of trades out there. And you're going to find, by training with me this year, by focusing in on the low resistance liquidity runs, those are the trades that I'm training your eye to see them. They're the little unicorn trades that just, you know, look, look at the unicorn. Ain't nothing fucking scary about a unicorn. You want to go there. You want to pet it. You want to be friends with it. You know, it's 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 inviting. That's how a low resistance liquidity run signature is. It's it's nice. They're just very very pleasant to deal with in the marketplace. They're real quick to respond to you, and they get almost instant gratification. And that to me is what every trader wants. Contrast that with the fucking donkey from Shrek. Okay. This little fucker, he's cute, but he's a pain in the ass. That's exactly what a high resistance liquidity run signature is. Like, listen, 
You don't want to be rude. Okay. You tolerate your cousin. You don't want to see him. Okay. But they, they always find their way at, at functions, but you're trying to find your way out of the conversations and always being outside their reach. You want to treat the high resistance liquidity run signature trades like that. And as soon as you identify that you fell into a conversation with that cousin, like the high resistance liquidity run signature, and it becomes uncomfortable and you're looking for any opportunity for him to shut the fuck up so you can get the conversation and say, oh yeah, you're texting your friend, call me right now. So that way I can pretend I got to get out of here. <laughs> okay? You're looking for any off ramp. That's what you're doing with these types of trades. You're looking for any reason to bail on it. As soon as you recognize you're in a high resistance liquidity run signature, listen, go back and look at the commentary in that video. I, I knew what I was doing. I knew I even labeled it. It's high resistance liquidity runs. I'm showing you by contrast. Look at the other trades that I show. When they're low resistance, they're just real quick, sudden, boom, delivered, secured the bag, easy, over and over and over again, easy, easy, easy. And then what the hell's going on? I'm trying to get somewhere and I feel like I'm on a stair climber in, this, in the same place, but doing thousands of repetitions and it just can't climb to my target. That, that's exactly what a high resistance liquidity run signature is. This, the market's moving. You can make money, you can make five points, but when you're trying to hold on for these big, long 20 handles, 30 handle moves, they can wear you out. If you're in there trying to expect real quick, sudden, big blast off moves, mm -mm, it ain't going to happen. So you have to change your outlook on what you're anticipating in price delivery. And you'll appreciate that more when we're doing the live streams because I'm going to explain where it should be fast, where it should be like today. And then over time, you'll start to see the characteristics. Oh, yeah, this I can see it. I can't articulate it in words. Like there's no way. And this is why I said like, there's certain things in my books. There's just no way. There's no way that it could be communicated unless you just see me talk about it live. When you see me outline it, and this is what the candle is likely to do. You don't want to see it do this. You don't want to see it. I do the best I can with a one minute chart with annotating it, but it's still not the same as what you'll see in February. Like you'll feel it. You'll feel exactly like you're dialed in, like you're connected with price. And in times where I'm off, and I'm out of sync and I get it wrong, you'll see how it gives me indications that, okay, this is not what I should be looking for. Either I move to the sideline and wait for more information, or maybe, not all the time, maybe reverse and go the other direction. And I'll talk about what makes it feasible for me to want to reverse and go against my initial expectation. What changes my mind about that? So whatever happens that price does with us when we're doing our live sessions, you're going to understand more about yourself because you will see looking at the charts. And when I say what I'm saying about the chart at the time, you're going to have an immediate response internally. I don't see that. Or I think it's going to go the other way. And then some of you will be wrestling with me. You think it's going to go this way or you're going to go that way. And it might be amusing to see when you might be right and I get it wrong. But most of the time, you're going to be wrong, and you need to learn from that and understand that are you the type of person like my uncle was? He's a contrarian, and I tried to tell him all the time. I have students. Troy, you know who you are. <laughs> okay, 2016. Young man, used to play poker, and uh, most of everything I would say in my commentaries, this guy would fade it. Like he would fade it. And I'm not beating you up, Troy. Nobody knows your last name. Okay, but you know who I'm talking to. And then he would send me an email saying, I'm, I'm frustrated. I can't get to work. And then we would go through, like, what are you doing? And he's fading me. So I tell him, I said, listen, you're fading my analysis, doing the opposite of it. And then you're complaining to me about why it ain't panning out, why you can't make it work. Like, what the hell? It was so frustrating for me as his teacher to try to, like, I tried to, find all kinds of ways to bridge it to him and not hurt his feelings and be encouraging at the same time. But finally I said, you know what? You're revealing to me as a teacher that your strength is being a contrarian trader. So instead of me trying to 
change him and push him into a specific approach, he's better suited to look for opportunities to be contrary, not so much a contrary of me, but that's his approach to trading. So if, for instance, like a turtle, excuse me, a turtle suit trade, something that a, a, a false break above relative equal highs, I believe that that would be a model that would fit his, well, personality and his issues with being taught under me, I can see how that could be turned into an advantageous strength. Whereas his, his ability to not follow my instructions and go with the bias I've outlined, one could argue, hey, you are being a unruly student. When dealing with them for weeks and months and then seeing it constantly materialize, it was better for him to just identify patterns that fit the criteria that is contrarian. So this is what I'm trying to talk about most of the time in these discussions, in the videos, and in these presentations, because you don't know what's going to materialize in you once you start getting into this. Listen to the videos and watching videos and, and watching what I do on the charts. Some of you, unfortunately, attribute that as you're doing something. You're doing nothing. You're watching Netflix ICT series, okay? And the series is ending this year. So you want to have an interactive experience. You want to be pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone and deferring all your weekend warrior stuff. Really pull yourself into this. Everything that you're looking for to get you on the right foot, learning how to do this re real time, find the setups that make the most sense for you. Some of you might not be able to do the 2022 model. It doesn't make sense to you. Like you, you want something contrarian. Okay. Well, instead of watching the buy side liquidity get purged and then wait for a shift in market structure, you're waiting for that buy side liquidity pool to be purged, and that's your trade. Folks that are contrarian that are just looking for the fake entry for breakouts, people that resist you know, good logic, sound logic, and, and bias, they are the ones that do the best with turtle soup. And my uncle, if he just would have fucking listened to me, but he was a contrary in the heart, true and true, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't submit himself to that because he felt that I'm his nephew. I'm younger than him. He introduced trading to me. He's my senior. And I shouldn't be able to teach him anything. He should be the one being looked up to. And he wrestled with that. He wrestled with that. He pulled a fucking Vinny. Okay. Vinny is made a, a, a whole storyline of all kinds of bullshit that ain't even fucking true to justify his discomfort. He can't find his own audience. He can't prove that he's profitable or consistent. He can't prove that his concepts or his product is worth buying. I'm dealing with my uncle again. Just focus on the thing right now. Remove all the drama. Take all that bullshit out of there. And if my uncle would have done that, take all the drama about, oh, your nephew taught you how to trade. Oh, what would your friends and coworkers think about that? Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit who you taught or, or who taught you? Once you learn the skill set, once you learn this, I can't take it back from you. Nobody can take it from you. You can carve out your own living the way the fuck you want to live it. Who cares? I just want to encourage you along the way to live a life that's going to help other people. Some of you interpret that as reteach my shit in your own mentorship. That's not what I said. If you do well, help other people. That's it. Give them something they didn't ask for when they need it. Or if they need help, and you can do it, help them. I get so many requests, and I just had one of my students reach out to me. Said, listen, um, you know, I'm on hard times. You know, can you help me out? I don't want to go back to working a job. That would be a, a blow to my ego or, or couldn't do it. And he just needs the, you know, that little push. 
And I replied to him and I said, look, honestly, every single day I get requests for people all around the world. Hey, look, can you help me? I need help with this. Can you, can you fund me? Can you give me a account? I have money, but it's almost like that meme that's going around where they said, if uh, Elon Musk, you know, gave everybody a billion dollars, he would still have money up over, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, just look around, you'll see it. It's, I can't do that for everybody. I can't, but I'm doing something better than that. I'm telling you how to get your own without charging you. And I'm giving you it for, you know, for free. And I'm proving it works. I'm showing you the logic. I'm teaching you. And I'm giving you my whole year. I'm living with you all via social media. I'm still talking to you. I want you to do better. That's all. I don't give a fuck if you buy my book or books. I don't care. You won't need them. If you put the work in this year, you won't need to buy my book. How's that a sales pitch for a book? That's the worst marketing campaign ever. (laughs) I'm writing the book to solidify that this is my shit. And everybody else that's ever going to talk about it and has tried to talk about it in their books, rags of a book, okay, is nonsense. That's the only reason why I'm putting it in print. I don't give a fuck if it's a bestseller. I don't care if nobody buys it. I don't care. I don't care. But this year, I care to see that you find success. It's going to be hard. It's going to be frustrating sometimes. It's going to be even worse if you have somebody in your life telling you you're wasting your time. If you give your ear to people that are telling you constantly, we have the only thing that works. ICT is a scam. Look around. Am I showing you scam? Am I showing you fraud? Am I showing you the goods? I believe I am. Who's really got your best interest at heart? Ask that of any mentor right now, any of them. But just make sure you keep your fucking payments up to date. Common sense, folks. Common sense. It's all it requires. Show up every day. Expect to have to work. And I'm reminding you when you get in here, even when you do it right, and you're in a trade, it's profitable. You're going to encounter that time where now it's hard. Do I hold the trade? What do I do? I've already rolled my stop. In that moment is a weird internal argument. It's it's a weird, it's very stressful. And the, the sooner you identify it, and the sooner that you adopt the mindset of, I'm not dealing with it. And it's not weakness, it's strength. I'm wasting no more time on this. I'm canceling it. I'm euthanizing the whole trade. It can't take any more money from you. As soon as you kill the trade, you cannot have any more fees and commissions paid on it. You have no more fear about it panning out to a loss, full stop out. You've banked more money than you would have if it goes to your stop. How's that a bad transaction? Please make me understand that that that's something that's not worth doing. Convince me that that's not sound logic. Because it is. And you're listening to people write books and talk about things on videos and shit. And they have never brought anything to the table to help you become better at this at all. And just like the trade that you know damn well you should be getting out of, you're holding on to a loser. You're holding on to toxic people because drama is infectious. And drama and cancel culture is a fire. Once it starts, it spreads quick. And that's all these people want to see happen with me. And here I am. I'm pissing on every fire they start. Bulletproof. Wrecking ball proof. Fireproof. Fuck all y'all. Okay? You don't like me? I don't give a shit. I'm not here for you. I'm not here for you. I don't give a fuck if your algo box or your fucking KB trading bullshit makes you a lot of money or if it doesn't make you a fucking penny. You get what you get. You deserve what you fucking get. But listen, you ain't doing shit to me. You're not slowing me down. I haven't even started yet. 
And you're seeing the proof that I got shit that nobody's seen before. And I'm going to turn a lot of you into financial fucking savages this year. You're going to do shit that you've never even imagined before. You're going to make so much fucking decisions that have so much more emphasis on the outcome of your life. Books would have never given it to you. Mentorships and what anybody else would have never given it to you. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm getting all my shit together. I'm getting organized. And we're going to have school. Class is open on February 7th. It would be foolish for you not to prepare yourself. It would be foolish for you not to commit 110% this year. The entire trajectory of your life could change this year. And starting in 2024, you could be carving out an entirely different outcome for your whole family. Not just you, everybody after you, your children, their children, and so forth. What's going to stop you? What's the thing? Who's the person that's going to say, yeah, this is enough for me to say I'm not going to do it? That's weakness. Not, this isn't making me money. This is too much stress. I'm going to close this losing trade or potential losing trade. That's a strength. That's not a weakness. Most of your opinions about things in this industry are upside down. You think everybody gets rich the first month they go out and start trading. You think everybody has no losing trades, no drawdown. Nobody's ever blown out an account that's profitable and consistent now. There's no way somebody that blew out accounts could find consistency and profitability now when everybody that ever gets there has done that. And the ones that have done it, they don't hide it. It's their badge. That's their, that's their war scars. I endured a whole shit ton of stuff to get to the point where I know what I know now. And you don't need to go through all of that. You don't need to do that. And I'm trying my best. I wish I was better at teaching. I wish I was. I, I pray all the time that, you know, is unrefined as I am as a man. I'm, I'm falling short many times as a teacher. And sometimes, you know, I feel like I wish I could have done it better, but I don't, I don't know how to do it better. Like, I don't know how I could make it any better than I'm doing it. I just know the things that I do work. And I've also found that the people that are lazy, that don't do the things I tell them to do, they never get here. And they can call me a fraud. They can call me a scammer. They can call me whatever the fuck they want to call me. I know that they're in pain because they want it to work for them and they want it to be easy. But I've already told every one of you, and every time I've ever opened up a mentorship, I've always said, it's going to take a lot of work and it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to put a lot of effort into this. And they all come in. Yeah, we want to do it. We're ready. I'm going to do everything. The first month I got to do what? Fuck this. I'm out of here. Yep. You're going to find out who you really are this year. And you got to press into it. When it's uncomfortable, press into that. That's what trading is going to feel like. You do not know if your trade is going to be stopped out. That uncertainty, you have to press into that as a trader. The fact that you're still listening to me, you got what it takes. You have exactly what it takes. Everybody that taps out and says, oh, these videos are too long. You're droning on, man. Get to the point. I delete your shit. You're a waste of my fucking time. I'm not going to read your tweet, and I don't want to read your shit on my channel anymore. I delete it. You're lazy. Go fuck off. I don't need to tell you to your face. I don't make a show of it. 
But that's what I do with people like you. If you're toxic, I delete you. Unless you're Vinny or Sammy. You're not blocked, bitches. I'm not going to block you. You're going to be left open so that way when you get on the leaderboard, should you ever do it, I'll see it. Nobody will have to retweet it to me. I'm waiting. I am fucking waiting with bells on. Think I can't whoop your ass? <laughs> Come on. Come on. And I can do that and mentor. I'm not distracted. It's still trading, folks. The things that I'm doing right now are whooping their ass now. I don't need to do half of what I'm doing. 20% a day, 10% a day, 15% a day. How many losing trades are you seeing? Mm-hmm. Do the fucking math on that. I don't need a calculator, baby. I know how this fucking ends. Me winning. You got a mentor that's absolutely fucking jacked up this year. I am. I can't wait. I can't fucking wait until February 7th. Why don't you just start sooner, ICT? Honestly, I've contemplated that. <laughs> Today, I almost did it. I was like, okay, let me just, let me just, no, 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 let's just, just relax. My pro call has been for years. First Tuesday of February. That's when I, that's when I pull the trigger and that's when I start taking it for what it is, not staying. Like now, usually I wouldn't be doing anything in the marketplace. At all. And before I started mentoring you, know, the, the community that I started with, with 2016 group, I wouldn't even be looking at charts. And that's why I required the first Tuesday of February, allowing January, we can be, sometimes it's a sloppy month where it can be just really just not doing a whole lot. I mean, we're seeing movement, but it's still choppy. It's still shitty markets. And don't let my analysis on Tuesday night with that big ass drop going down to perfect you know, delivery of price, convince you that January is a good month all the time. It's not. And then what usually would happen before I started mentoring is it would take me about a week and a half for me to get acclimated to what the market was doing. So even though I would be in there, my trades would be very, very small, one contract, maybe two, and just work in slowly to get a feel for what the market's doing because I would not be looking at it from the second week of November all the way up to the first Tuesday of February. But because I was mentoring, I always stayed looking at the charts, even though I wasn't actively teaching with the group because I would take a couple weeks off you know, in December going into February. It would be light commentary because I needed to make sure I stayed plugged in. That way I'm, and that's all I've been doing with you all. Because some of you are like, you know, dude, why are you, why are you sending all these recordings? And you know, why aren't you doing this? And why you I'm keeping myself close to the marketplace. So that way, when I go on February 7th, I'm not rusty. Just like a skill set, like anything else, you have to use it. Or you got to practice, and, like stretching out. You, know, you want to be able to do a split, right? You can't do a fucking split the first time you want to do a split. You got to grow into that. It's painful. It takes time. And you got to sit through that painful stretch over months to get that well if you step away from the charts and you don't get a feel for the rhythm the order flow that's going on the, the climate the sentiment that's in the marketplace all there's all kinds of shit going on in the world right now and that's what makes trading very very difficult right now all the biggest talkers are all falling on their face right now too it's hard i didn't say it was easy i'm having a hard time getting a read on some of this shit that's the way it is. This is the hardest the market's ever been in my 30 years. So if you feel like you're having a hard time getting your footing, think about this. And I'm going to close it. You're learning to do the most difficult shit in the world. This skill set, when you obtain it, and if you listen and you show up every day, you're going to. You're going to. And you're going to spend the rest of your life honing that skill, keeping it, working towards improving yourself, refining it. And nobody can take it away from you. If your spouse leaves you, okay, that's unfortunate, but they can't take this weight with you. 
you're going to have this skill set for as long as you have your mental faculties. And you can change your whole financial landscape. And when you learn how to do this in this environment, when it gets easy, and it will, when, I don't know. But there's going to be easy days and easy months and easy conditions to trade in. And you are going to feel like a, a freaking monster. Like you can do anything, nothing wrong in those environments. You should be commending yourself that you're even willing to do this in the hardest time it's ever been for trading. What do you mean it's hard? It's, it, this is what you're going to see, these jokers that are going to be tweeting to me. This guy thought about trading's easy. I made this today. Okay, show me your last six months. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Take things in the right proper context. I'm saying that in my 30 years of experience in these markets, I have never seen a condition that has been so choppy, so just unorganized price action, just real shitty. And that is not the algorithm being changed. It's not them rewriting the algorithm. None of that is a factor here. It's just the fact that we have a lot of stuff going on. All the time, it's it's constant. You know, geopolitical things, wars breaking out over here. You know, this government's being overtaken by that one. You know, uh, global unification, food becoming scarce, illnesses. All that stuff is weighing heavily on everyone. Large funding firms, not like funding firms for trading, but like you know, institutions, big banks, you know, they have a great respect for the level of risk right now. They're not out there rolling the dice. And because they're not participating, even though the algorithm is pricing higher and lower, they're not biting yet. And that's why the market's doing what it's doing. They, they're going to have to create a, a significant displacement in price to get sentiment engaged. We're still early in the year. These people that run these funds and hedge funds and put billions at work, they're not chopping at the bit. This is a plunk down any old bet. They want to have something really meaningful to acquire and absorb the risk that's Inherent to having a trade in this environment. Who's rushing to buy what stock right now? Think about that. What company out there is doing no wrong and everybody should just pour their money into it? Who the fuck knows? I don't know. What currency in what country is the most trustworthy right now that you should be focusing on that currency and pouring your money into it? Good luck with that. When you look at it like that, it's quick and easy to understand why the markets are doing what they're doing. They're choppy for a reason because no one with big, deep pockets are participating. It's just us right now, the little guppies moving around. So they don't need to move the market a lot for us. That's all the liquidity and order flow that's coming in. But when they create this next move, what move? You'll know it. It's going to be a shift in market structure that's meaningful. You'll see it. It will be obvious. And that will get everybody thinking, okay, we're off to the races now. And they start allocating funds to positions. Hedge funds start pouring in money. And that is what we're waiting for because they are going to be cannibalized. The markets are not going after retail Rick. Retail Rick just puts himself underneath the tires of the truck. They're going after the deep pockets that's out there in the marketplace. Not every hedge fund is profitable. Some of them are just lunch. So I covered a lot of stuff. Probably some things you probably didn't want to listen to. I don't care. I'm not here for you. I'm here for the people that just want to learn. And... 
understand that this is difficult. They're going to understand about many of the things that you aren't going to learn about in books, systems and approaches and things. That's not, that's not it. It's the you, the person that's listening, the person that's got to look in that mirror tonight, tomorrow, and you're going to reflect on the things that you're learning. And how's that going to impact your life? Are you going to feel like this is too much? I ain't going to bother with it. You know, it should have been easier. It's not. I'm, I'm not a good teacher, so there's your perfect excuse. Good. Run with that one. If, if you don't have the wherewithal to endure it, then this isn't for you. It's not for you. Not because I'm not willing and not because it's something that you couldn't learn. It's just, it's a decision that you've made. And once you settle on that de decision, you know, it's best for you not to um, you know, participate that much. Why waste your time? Don't waste my time. I won't waste yours. But it's going to be requiring a lot of work. You're going to get frustrated many times. You're going to feel like you want to quit. Don't. Let me remind you. You're not swiping a credit card here. You're not sending me PayPal. You're not giving me money. You don't even have to thank me. <laughs> okay. Keep your focus on you this year. There's no reason for you to feel like you should want to quit. I get no ad revenue on this. And I'm still talking to you. I want to see you do well. But you're going to have to listen. If you don't listen, the lessons are going to be much more painful than they need to be. So I want you to enjoy your weekend, study, enjoy your time with your family as well. So make sure you're keeping time for them. Keep your business your business. Don't talk about what you're doing at work or at school or around your friends. If they're not already involved in this, don't invite them. You don't need to be a sales rep for ICT with your friends and family and coworkers. Okay. Keep the focus on you. Build yourself up. Stay busy in your studying, and I will be back at it again with you all on Monday. So I'll talk to you then. Be safe.